The greatest feeling in the world was holding my own gun. I'm hypertensive, but all my decisions been wholesome. My independence had me flipping on siblings I stole from. Said I'm just big and loud. Well, half a pound is my silent treatment. I punched out plugs I could've stopped from eating. Jackie Gleason on the TV while his mama's sleeping. That plate was made, or oh, he got that Chick Fil A like she Polynesian. The fucking niggas do to me though. So I stand there blinded while my jewelry glows. Yeah, let's let's yep. let's from Brooklyn, right? take a quick count. How many yeah, how many Brooklyn heads is in here? Everybody. Oh, damn. <laughs> except, right? except my boy. Uh -oh, okay. uh -oh. yeah. There you go. So yeah. it's so it's 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 That's unanimous, it. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's unanimous. It's just you and you all numbered. Hold on, hold you on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In the yard, bro. Just let me just let me get this. It's you unanimous, right? I just want to be clear. It's mm -hmm. unanimous. It's all Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. Queens get the money. That's right. All right. That's right. Okay, right. so we, 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 we settled on that. <clears throat> yeah, that's. I'm fact. not quiet when right, that's right. no borough is ever here. I'm yeah. always from Queens, but I show love every place, that's which right. is why there's no place I can't go. That's but Brooklyn, place Brooklyn keep anywhere. on taking it though. You know what I'm you saying? Sure yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Get that right. Queens get yeah, the money yeah, though. We here though. Now, now that people have had to sit through that, absolutely, absolutely pointless. What up? We back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world, 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 world. Hit that like, hit that share, make sure you in here, don't cost you no paper unless you's a mother... Hater, 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 They, 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 <laughs> yeah, Jim. Right yeah, Jim. Yeah, yeah, give him chance. That took yeah. us back in the hole. Everything runs smooth on cue. Shout out to Mad Fafa. He's sick as a dog. He came in here just long enough to try to get everybody else sick on some real haters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So real he, was, he was the hater Solo. today. Yeah, yeah, for real. Came in here trying to spread the cooties, but we got him up out of here before it could get worse. That's Gat, right. what up? We in the building. Salute, King. What's up? Chas, how you doing, sis? Shout out to the crew. Shout out to the crew. Hands up, a lot of Brooklyn over there. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm yes, not indeed. nervous, I feel safe. Yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel very well protected. We ain't gonna let nobody take you. That's, that's, <laughs> that's all I have asked. <laughs> Champ, how you holding? Everything is good, everything is great. I'm happy to be home, be free, not around that's Everything right. is moving uh, accordingly. Uh, new um, YKTV magazine is out right now with Jim Jones and Mano Grace in the covers. The next issue is gonna be super, super lit. And shout out, uh, happy belated birthday to my boy Casanova two times. Hold your head in there, mm. free him till it's backwards. You know what I mean? Nah, One time right. for Cass. Right. One time for Cass. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. Right. I don't need to get into too much else. Shout out to the boy Gusto for the shirt that started all this trouble. <laughs> <laughs> one time for Bob D. All right. One time for yes. Bob D. Yes. 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 Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. First dude I ever heard say Queens get the money. Rest mm. in peace, prodigy. But we can't keep it in Queens tonight because we have to go to Brooklyn because the guests we have in the chair are so Brooklyn. The flag is so heavy. The music is so thorough. I know so many artists who go through their whole careers hoping to score just one, one hit that people remember. And these dudes got several. Mm. Several. And if Appreciate you know, it. you know. It's not the kind we give away. It's the kind the culture keeps close to the chest because we don't want it watered down. And these dudes are incapable of that. One time, smoother hustler triggered again. Big Brooklyn. 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 Brownsville. Brownsville? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Matt. What you mean? No, we're not dancing that dance again. Fellas, what's good with you, man? Everything's great, man. Enjoying life. Um, you know. Uh, Word up. Enjoying, enjoying life. life. Watching the game. You know, the hip hop game. Watching it from, from the sidelines. Just, you know. I don't know how you know. entertaining it is now. It's not that to... it's not that entertaining, you know. Funny entertaining, but yeah. it's a lot of killing and shit going along. I mean, which is terrible. It's, it's insane, man. It's insane. What's our responsibility? For that, I'm jumping right into the deep end. What's what's right. our responsibility as dudes mm. who we we talked a lot of business 
in these earlier records. You know what I mean? We talked a whole, there's a lot of lot of this, a lot of this. We talked a lot. Mm-hmm. And now we we have a generation that is intent on living that and showing it. You dig know what I mean? It's not yeah, just yeah. it's not just right. whereas we were right. talking Reflective. on the mic and then right. we, you know, right. you know, right. I, on the mic I'll smoke you. On the mm-hmm. mic I'll murder mm-hmm. you. On the mic I'm take but now in real life we stress being real so much. Yeah. They want yeah. to show and prove. It's crazy. I, I think it starts with the OGs. You know, the OGs done seen enough, done did enough um, to be able to, to guide the young shorties coming up. And I'm, I'm talking about for the blocks. You know, this may not apply to everybody, but from where we come from, right? It take the older generation to school the younger generation, right? The younger generation is mimicking what, the, what they see around them, right? So if you got dudes that been through that shit, that actually been through that shit, because if you've been through some shit, you gonna give them the real. You ain't gonna shine it up. Oh, yo, man, oh, you doing it wrong. Get the flip it this way. You ain't gonna run him down the rabbit hole into some bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need more of that. And that's everywhere. You know, and we it's 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 everywhere, it's everywhere. But <clears throat> you know. Some may have it. Now, this when this comes into play. It's like, who's shiny and who's not, right? So the nigga who got all the fly shit, the car, the, you know, that shit looks attractive. Mm-hmm. So if he talking the wrong, all the wrong shit, he going to have a, a bunch of followers running right. behind him, right? But if he talking the right shit... You know, he giving them that real game, none of that sideways, get over on the lower bullshit that we was tricked on. You know what I mean? Hmm. We was tricked on that shit, you know. Um, give it to them real. I mean, it'll hope, I, I would hope it would, that shit would kind of lighten up and subside because, damn, I was saying a lot of dudes, like a, a lot of niggas just getting killed. Boom, boom, boom. Rapper, 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 rapper. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? This shit's like assassination on rappers, right? Mm-hmm. But then, you know, like a, a lot of rappers speak their own shit into existence as well. Some motherfuckers won't have no beef <clears throat> and then get an opportunity to make some records. And now he like, I got ops and I got ops. And now you nigga, you conjuring up all of the shit you trying to dodge. You conjuring all that mm-hmm. shit up. All, all this shit. Rap, words, spells, spelling. Spell. We mm-hmm. conjuring spells, my nigga. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The music helped that shit just, you know, you ever jump right. in the car, you throw on your favorite record. It's like, ugh, this shit is this. And, and, and you don't know why. Yeah. All right, but getting back to, you yeah, know. Energy, it, yeah. The old OGs got to school the young Gs. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? What's fucked up is a lot of older niggas, these niggas is coming home and they impressed by the young niggas Mm -hmm. who running around flashing their credit card, swiping and doing all that fly shit. Mm -hmm. And they fascinated by that. The the older niggas, some of them, these niggas like, oh, I want to get out. Oh, I want... So, Mm -hmm. we was was them Mm -hmm. niggas though. You know what I'm saying? Can't front. I guess it's a cycle. We was those niggas who had influenced on some of the older motherfuckers in our neighborhood that wasn't doing shit, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And but it wasn't through, turned them out. It wasn't through crime necessarily. Well, to some degree, we was breaking the law at one point. I mean, mm-hmm. for our back in the day days. Well, you were you you definitely at that time. And correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But at that point in time, you couldn't. It was hard to be in music without some kind of street ties. Absolutely. I mean, you know, all I. Our shit originated from just us putting our money behind us. It was bottom line. And, and let me explain this shit. You know, I first started, <clears throat> God bless him, with this guy, Michael Ellis. Now, if you look him up, he is considered the reggaeton godfather, right? Mm-hmm. He had this artist called El General. He had this artist called El, El Henada, right? Yeah. And he had this artist called Killer Ranks. And he was super big time, super big time. My, this nigga cause was incredible, right? So he was like my godfather and shit. He had a little boy and he owned a, 
he had a, a building on No Strand and Empire, just bought it, brand new. It was about 50 apartments in this building. And he had a car lot, right? Bunch of BMWs and shit. So I would go over there. He would, oh, son, he called me a son. I could go over there and mind you, these guys, you know, I don't, I, I was like 13, 14, seeing all that shit, you know, the Scarface movies and all that shit. I was sitting right in the middle of it, right? But he could have turned me out, meaning the nigga could have put a key in our hand, in my hand, and said, yo, uh, um. right. Right? Instead, he used to bring his son around, shouts this son. He used to bring his son around and say, yo, hold my son, man. You know, you know, you're gonna be the, the rapper. Now, mind you, I don't know. Look, listen, I may take slack from this shit, but I was the first nigga who made the word Spanglish. Mm. Hmm. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna tell you, Michael Ellis, whoever whoever's in the reggaeton world, Michael Ellis. El General, El Hanadal, do your homework. All right, but anyway, so leave it I'm, in the comment section. If anybody yeah, got leave any, it in. If anybody, yeah, anybody, leave it in the comment section. That, leave it in the comment section. Contest that, yeah. So, um, so he's, you, you know, they prepping for tour and all that shit. And I don't know how big this guy El General is, right? I'm like, fuck. I right, say, so, oh, yo, he gonna pick you up from school, and uh, no, he gonna meet you when you get from school. Coming from school was fucking limousine in front of my building, right? How old are you? I'm 13. Mm-hmm. 13. Yeah. In front of my building. Right? Tall motherfucker standing up there. He got a, a general suit on with stripes and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? My mom's, I lived on the second floor, so she in the window. Oh, yeah, this is, um, what you say, El General? Oh, uh, them niggas scooped me up, took me off. I went on tour with them guys, right? At like, just as a rapper, yeah. As a as a rapper, I was smooth. My name was Smooth the Hustler. No, it was smooth, but the hustler was coming into play, right? Um, so you know, I did that shit, and then came back, and then got into a bunch of trouble on some street shit, and then went in. Right. So um, how old were you when you came? To still thirteen? No, 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 no. I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to. I don't want to stop at thirteen. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, after that, he ended up getting like, I didn't want to drag it on because, you know, they was into a lot of shit. So unfortunately- Funding the music. He was into a bunch of Into shit. a bunch of other shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so unfortunately, these guys got in trouble and they started like getting locked up. Um, and um, But you weren't attached to that. I wasn't attached to it at all, at all, you know. And then uh, I caught wind of this fucking- this uh, compilation, The Hell That's Real, right? Mm-hmm. From around my way and shit. I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck? I see Lil Fame on it. I'm like, oh shit. Now, mind you, him, him and I, we went to fucking daycare together. You know, hmm. I know this nigga. <laughs> this nigga live up the street from me, right? Mind you, during our trek, you know, shout to Bobby Baskins, shout, uh, uh, shout to uh, 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 Humble. These two guys, they from, from the plazas, they used to take us around to fucking community centers. You know, Lil Fame, Lil Fame used to DJ, you know, nigga was nasty, nasty. Um, but we would be trying to get our shit popping off. I was a rapper, he was a rapper. Um, and God bless the dad, my man Jam, um, he was a rapper. So it was, we all was in the same circle and then you know, I sought DR period out. But before like, that, weren't y'all dancing before that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a history of, of dancing. We was the guest riders. Um, I mean, we was trying to do a lot of shit. It was at one point, uh, it was this this uh network, this event called an All Star Talent Show. Right. Um, put on by Pam Pam, Pam Lewis. Lewis, right? Mm-hmm. And um it you know they would they would have the neighborhoods sign up, so you know it, it'd be all right. We doing Brooklyn, all the Brooklyn neighborhoods to come audition at this place. They get picked and then they'll be called back to perform again at the show. And you know whoever the groups are, the neighborhoods would come out and buy tickets and support them and all. 
Lil mm. Apollo, word, shit yeah, was fly. But it was sell out. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah, shit was, was fly, out. shit was so fly. Crazy. Shouts crazy. to everybody who was at the All-Star Talent Show. Why can't we shit get Shit was that incredible. Going it, it, used to be, yeah. it used to be about good 12, 13 groups. Yeah, right, right. And right. then you would, they would have celebrity judges. Um, judges. Yeah, mm, yeah, and you, they would have categories, rap, dance, blah, 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 more blah right? more the kids. So, like, right yeah. you. you know, Idol, we, we doing, we doing other, illegal shit, but you know, we wanted to get into this hip hop shit. You know, we start dancing, we start coming up with some crazy shit. I don't mean like dancing that that, you know, pretty shit. You know, anybody who know and I'm it's gonna be a gang of comments under this shit. Guest riders, they know if they was there, they know. Every mm -hmm. show we won first place. Right? Mm. Every single show. Every single mm. show. Up to the yeah. So they called mm -hmm. it the Nationals. We went to Town Hall. We blew that shit out the water. Then we came back as special, special guests, guests. Yeah. and we taught a girl group called Cousins our special routines and shit. And they won first place straight through <laughs> all the yeah, way all to all the Nationals. Am I lying? So a gangster, gangster, real gangster shit. But um, so so we was doing that. But at the time, right, I was, I, you know, I was touching little stages, but that stage in particular, it was fucking crowds of people out there from all over. I'm like, oh, this is my time. Let me just jump up. I grabbed the mic and started rocking. Rock. They went crazy. That's when like punchlines was like super heavy. It's, it's, it's heavy now, which is great. You know, where it is now is, is dope. This I one, love it. This one is but, starting. but when it was starting, the punchline, and, and just to be able to captivate the crowd. And everybody went crazy, and, and I won first place uh, in the rap category. And, where, and then I'm where, like, all right, I'm going to Where are you when this just happened? I'm he there. was there. <laughs> he there. there. We did we did nothing apart. This, I'm, this I'm, guess, blood I'm guest riders. You yeah. know? We were guest riders. We was, like he said, we was doing our dancing. What's the age difference? One, One year. year apart. Oh, so mm -hmm. shit. He's 13, you 12, you right. right oh, okay. Right, so that, right. that don't even... Yeah, yeah, and I'm a big twelve, so I'm everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, more places than I am. Yeah, big little know. brother, big little brother, yeah. my big you younger know. brother. Yeah, it's all good. I got you. We we got we got the connection though. You know, mm -hmm. we we got our little shit. But, oh, but twelve, we, we, we if, solid. if he was like five years young, I'd have been like, okay, well, where were you watching all this at the same time? Yeah, nah, twelve, was right you old there. enough to be? If he's he thirteen, was right you there. twelve. He was right there. Sometimes I had to come get him out of the mix. <laughs> to bring him where I'm at. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck you doing over here? I'm trying to do this. Fuck you still over there yeah. for? You know what I mean? So, you know, but that's that's that brother shit. Whoever got brothers, you know, you can't, you know, I don't know how other brothers move, but we in sync. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, one ain't afraid to check the other. And uh, eh, that's what it is. It's rare in this, in this yeah. day and age. You see a lot of people who... Call the man your brother, you call him, but as soon as a little money come into play, as soon as a woman come into play, things yeah. go left. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, that's not your brother anymore. Right. But right. this same mother, same father. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we ain't yeah. going nowhere. We can't change that top. You know, that yeah, 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 yeah. And we've been, we been going family, man. Listen, you know, you know our whole career, like I, like I was starting to say, our whole career was pretty much built on how we going change our narrative because we was doing way too much shit we was doing way so again the dancing was one we was dabbling and everything else and then when 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 we got when we finally got some recognition was because running to the labels right we was running to the labels and everybody okay let me rewind it so i sort out dr Shouts to DR Perry. What made you right. uh, seek out DR specifically, though? He was the neighborhood producer. And like I said, I noticed this compilation album, The Hell That's Real. I'm like, how the fuck I'm not on it when <laughs> I is and we we in the street, right, young, right. active, right. we everywhere. Mm -hmm. How I ain't know about this and most shit. Most everybody on the CD at the time we knew. Yeah, you know, we and know, we knew everybody. We knew everybody. You know everybody. what I'm saying? So I'm mm -hmm. like, how we not on? What the fuck? All right, All right, let me go. <laughs> so, uh, so I meet D, which, which it was all good. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he had just did MOP shit, which again, they was, Fane was a friend of mine. And um, 
So I'm like, yo, I'm, uh, I was going in to do some time, right? I was out on bail. I was How out old? on bail. I, I was 16. 16 mm. is about to turn 17, right? Um, and I, I tell him, yo, 92, hold up, 92, I was 17. So 16, 16 going on 17. Um, so I tell him, yo, I'm about to go in and do a little bit of time, but I want to lay these three records. And he like, all right, yo, you know, you know, he was a little hesitant, but he told me to come through, come back through. So I went through, I laid um, this joint called Head Crack um, and two other joints. One was hustling. My everyday hmm. lifestyle ain't nothing but a hustle. Yeah. 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 Right? Right? Nobody Classic. move a muscle. Nobody move a muscle. Classic. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was to just a regular drum beat. And meanwhile, I'm inside. I'm calling. I'm checking on my brother and them. And they're like, yo, yo, we doing this. Mike. They rapping on the phone for hours and shit. Um, but MOP was shooting a video shoot. I'll never forget this. And Trey was like, yo, yo, we up here. Um, at the video shoot at MOP shit, Duke, you know, man. I'm like, oh, word, yeah, when I come home, yo, we gonna change the dynamics for us. Um, so when I came home, D oh, had already, down. Uh, only a few months, only a few months, you know, that's my past, you know what I'm saying? Um, but only a few months, thank God. And um, I came home and I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm do this music shit. So in the meantime, you know, all my buddies, they doing the other shit and I'm sliding down to his crib. Just, yo, listen to this. Yo, listen to this. Like I hooks up the whole nine yards. I'm trying to drain as much out of him from everything that I got that I'm bringing to him, you know? And he complimented that shit well. You know, he wanted them producers that would just sit there and just, oh, let me hear it. And just start going in right there on the spot. You know, 30, 40 minutes later, he got a, a, a real reference that you can, you know, get busy to. So that was the beauty of that, you know. And then we started shopping our shit. And uh, the labels was just like, yo, this shit is too hard. Like, what the fuck? Your name? What the fuck? Like, how we and going? Then, yeah, and then we got a showcase. Yeah, then we, yeah, we was running to the Maria Davis showcases. We shout out, you know, Maria. shout out Maria Legend, Davis. So she was a, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Come on, give it up, give it up. Yeah, very, very intricate in in, in my in my um, career climb. Very intricate. Her, y'all are asking the comments who Maria Davis is and why we stop and applaud every. Absolutely, time. her background is it's in, impeccable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She helped everybody. Yeah, us, Jay Z, but everybody, everybody she, came. She through. was moving New York City at that time. Yeah, Mad Wednesdays. If you, you, yeah. you had to go through her network for them people to respect your craft and what you was doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So shouts to her. Um, we did a lot of those SOs and, you know, uh, AKAs. It was a bunch mm -hmm. of clubs and spots that you had to touch. Um, in order to be solidified. In, in order to be solidified, mm -hmm. absolutely. And back in the days, let me tell you, niggas will check you. You step into a circle talking about what you do, who you with, where you are from, what you about. They're going to test that temperature right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. You can't be who can't be saying who you are and you ain't that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like that. It was, uh, my whole my whole rap shit it was based on like reality rap. You know, I was more into the reality of what the fuck was going on. It was like, "All right, we the storytellers of the neighborhood and blah blah blah. We never glorified that shit." You know, we never glorified selling drugs. We never glorified. We never did none of that. It was like the cause and effect. And, you know, what? this is the world. This is the repercussions. This is, you know. Um, but yet the labels turned y'all down. Seeing y'all was the label, hard. Yeah, the labels was just like, I mean, listen, you know, it was, it was, you know, we had the Tribe Called Quest and like Lost Boys and uh, it was just so much flavor and different. Nobody was trying to be like the next motherfucker. Mm -hmm. 
everybody just had their own flair, which was dope. Mind mm -hmm. you, I'm a fan of like hip hop, period. You know what I mean? Especially the ones before me. Like they done, I, you know, I grew up on some of the greatest music ever, you know. Uh, and nobody was trying to be somebody else, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so it was it was more of that they just mm -hmm. didn't know what what how to sell you. They didn't yeah, know how to pack I'm it. I'm saying, they I mean, because to... remember, like Ice T was saying was saying, hustler, H U S T L E. I remember that. Exactly. I remember that mm -hmm. as right. a fan, yeah. right? Yeah, I remember that. But I also remember me having records talking about hustling and selling rocks and all, because that's what we was doing. Right, mm -hmm. so for me, I'm like, oh shit, is is an easy transition. Uh, uh, but again, like I said, they ain't wanted to, they ain't want to touch it. They was like, ah, uh, we don't know how to sell this shit. Like, uh. meanwhile, a sister of mine at the time was in the label, and they signed her, and you know, it was all a lot of the shit that I wrote. Who which, you talking about? I mean, you know. <laughs> um, we don't know. That's why we nah, nah, nah. I said, I said, you know, meaning, you, you know, I mean, you know, if you're a hip hop head, you know. You All right, what's the label? I mean, this is what's, totally what's the label, irrelevant, Smooth? huh? What's the label? What was the label? But the label was Def Jam, Def Jam. right? I, knew the you was I know you saw the label right was there. Def Jam, but, but nah, went, it's all Capitol good. It's all right? yeah. She went to Capitol first, first, and then something happened with that, you know, and that didn't happen. But it was crazy because my man and them. Shouts to Sean and Paris. Um, they was they was the money men back in the days for this artist. She a beautiful girl, so I love her. You know. <laughs> but you were killing me, man. You refuse nah. to say who she killing is. Me, man. All right. It's in the book. Shouts, it's, it's in it's in the books already. All right, so but, shout out to So shouts to Foxy. There we right. go. Yeah, there we All go. right. Yeah. All right, let's give us some love. Hey, why, 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 why. And yo, you know what's fucked up? They ain't even, I saw they ain't even include her in some female hip hop shit. That shit is whack, yo. Yeah. That's what yeah. Yeah. I, agree. Shit be, like, I agree. Who be agree. making all of these decisions for hip hop? Who be doing that shit? Not you can't selectively leave out motherfuckers who really had a Major important. Impact. Come on, yo. Major you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anyway, backtracking, you know, and this ain't this ain't listen, she can rhyme and she knew how to write. So let's let's just clear that. No uh, disclaimer is right. necessary. I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But again, we in the same circle. Um, she hanging out with us. Of course, gonna be pen and shit. So I'm at the crib um on Vanderbilt. At my man in them crib, they had the whole building. Like I said, shouts to Sean in Paris, and they was the money niggas, and they was they was going to see D, Dr, paying him, so we can sharpen her sword, right? Mm -hmm. So once her sword was sharpened, um, I walked in one. One day in the in Def Jam in the conference room, and I seen Don Pooh and Foxy, and I said, "Oh, what the fuck?" Shouts to Don Pooh. <laughs> Shouts to Don Pooh, another real nigga. Word up, another another real G, another real G. It's no love loss or none of that shit, but this just what it was, you know. Um, you walk in, Don Pooh. I walk in, Don Foxy Poo, in the I'm like, conference oh, room. Oh shit! I right, boom, but they banging the joints that. Mm, some of them that I wrote, you know. Anyway, long story short, fast forward, she gets signed. Uh, uh, I mean, this was this was water under the bridge, mind you. Like I toured with Trig, like they did a a Def Jam, the Nutty Professor shit. Yeah. Like I wasn't on a label or none of that shit. Like I, I was, I went on a tour. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? She was around. We all was around. So it it wasn't, you know, it's not nothing shasty or no kind of. You're not shit, beefing you about no saying. business. You just nah, 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 story. nah. It's just it is what it is. What you know, year, some what people year, get emotional and sensitive. And shit. What year was that? Um, when you walked in and seen Pooh and Fox in the Oh, uh, damn! That had to be like '94 or something. '94, maybe, okay. maybe '94, '95-ish. You know, I it was around then because again, mm -hmm. we was we had pressed yeah. up our music and we was running around 
every motherfucking way. From, we, we went from here to Miami in caravans, three caravans full of white label music of ours. Hmm. And to all the colleges and was like, yo, if you like this shit, play it. If you don't like it, throw the shit in the garbage. Mm. The cool shit though, we had looked like drug dealers, right? So we had the drug dealer <laughs> yeah. look. So it worked. We looked like Too rappers, right? We, we look like, like what you're talking about. Yeah, we look yeah, like what we was shit. talking about. So right. check it. By the time we get back to the label, because the label was from DR House. Um, shouts to my man Rafiq. Shouts to my man Devon. Shouts to Rocco. Rocco. Yeah. Rafiq was the guy and Digger. Rafiq was the guy who had just came home, who I had met right after me in DR period. So Rafiq came in, he kind of started managing DR's situations. Um, and I took him on as my manager. Like he was fresh out of jail, blah. I knew him from the neighborhood, but again, so we all fresh out of bullshit and it's still and still swimming in our music. Be yeah. buying his own equipment for him. Right, right, he right. Was already buying his equipment for him, so they was building something on that and also. Right, mm -hmm. Rafiq was investing in DR early on prior. So when he came home, he came back to that situation, which the situation now is me. Right. Right. So, so you're the franchise as far as DR periods label is concerned. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And collect. Artist. Yes. I'm the first artist from DR. And collectively, again, this was a friend of DR periods who I was aware of who had just came home, who now is running to the labels with my stuff, with Trig stuff. And we trying to shop that the, the 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 joints, right? You know, D was in the studio. Shouts to D, but D was in the studio. D was a beat maker. D was D was banging out beats. Mm -hmm. You know, we was out touching the world, selling everybody on what we had, right? In everybody's face, like I was telling y'all earlier, we used to. We, we we used to drive to DC to go meet with BT to get our song on BT. Yeah, on we BT. was independent. We was independent. Right. This is all us, all our money. So we get back up to New York and the colleges is calling. Mm. Oh, yo, how much smooth do I have to charge for do a show? Blah, blah. How much you charge to do? So now we lining up our own college tour, you know. My my guy fresh out of jail, now learning how to delegate to and industry. operate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and we was just tr all learning. Everybody was young, trying to learn what this shit was about. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, DR had never ran a label before. You had never been a franchise artist right. before. Your man had never managed before. Right. You're all having the same conversations at the same time, but it's one big home team effort is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. And it's based around you, you, you're you observing the success that other people are having. Mm -hmm. Foxy's in the building now, but it's mm -hmm. off the strength of your records. Lord Fame has got something really popping with MOP, but mm -hmm. that's your man from up the block and mm -hmm. you school with him. And, DR period produced it, Nash mm -hmm. Man now. So right, right. it all seems like the fame is too close for you to it. But mm -hmm. you're moving the indie route stronger mm -hmm. than you're trying to go get a deal. The deals turned you down, mm -hmm. but you you're making major moves doing this indie thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you still want a deal at this point? Back then, it it was the idea to get a deal because the machine at the time was so big. I mean, look at my counterparts, right? Shouts to Jay-Z. Shouts to, well, God rest his soul, Biggie. Mm -hmm. You know, those was my counterparts and my comrades. You know what I'm saying? When, when we was doing our shows, it was <clears throat> us, Jay-Z, or Jay-Z, us, and, and, you know. Your peer group. Those the my peer group. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Even on radio runs... You know, it was we was always right behind each other and shit. Mm. You know, I always respected them dudes. I don't know who got what with what, but from our experience and our dealings, they was always solid. It's it's 
fucked up to see how him and Dane going through whatever, but that's their shit. They grown men. Men do what men do. That's whatever, you know. But it was always cool to see them because I knew they was a lot more seasoned than we was, mm -hmm. a lot more polished. I knew Jay-Z had the record out. Prior with Jazzo and back, he had did the music shit back in the day. This was their resurgence right, right. on their own shit with their own money. It, the, you can't tell a motherfucker what to do with that. Same shit we was doing. Mm -hmm. Same shit we was doing. Um, <clears throat> but you know, when you got the machine behind you, it's a whole different ball game, man. The machine, you know, you, they'll put you in play. You ain't got, you ain't got to be a mother. You can be a motherfucking nobody. You know, I've seen nobodies. You see nobodies today. You know, shouts to the nobodies. <laughs> but you see them, you see them today, and you know they manufactured, which is great. I mean, at the end of the day, this shit is a business, and you know we're in the business of selling smoke and mirrors. Well, that's what most of them are. Yeah. That's what most of them are. You know, so um, yeah. The question, the question, <laughs> the question. What? And feel free, anybody else. But the question, yeah. the question for me is: Your peer group is doing something very specific, right? You go look at the Def Jam roster, and with the work that you guys have put in, even like you know, uh, hustling, mm -hmm. everyday lifestyle, and then you got that the other one, but um, mm -hmm. but uh, hustle, sustain, hustlers, yeah. that yeah. smacking. Yeah, yeah. I never would have known that wasn't on a major. Mm. But then turns out when when the list of the new signees come out, he's on the list mm -hmm. for Def Jam. Mm -hmm. And Def Jam at that time, I don't know if any of y'all remember, but Def Jam at that time was really big on getting somebody out of oh. a popping crew. Absolutely. They had well, to that get, was a if it's Wu-Tang, they mm -hmm. went and got meth. If mm -hmm. it was uh, mm -hmm. Bone Thugs and Harmony, they went and got flesh. Right, but like right, they had right. to go get somebody right, out right. of one of the crews right. and they, they picked right. your younger brother. Right. To, now, did you turn something down or was that always the plan? Was that by design? That, that It was by design because we was running out of hustling money, funding <laughs> our music Adventure. career, right? <laughs> we was running out of money. It's, you know, payola. The payola was the big thing. Certain gatekeepers, payola was, it, it, it was what it was, right? Has that ever gone away? I mean, it, it, it like might, it might thing. not, but you know, nah, we don't. It, that, it, that it's was still relevant. It's still relevant. I'm sure it payola is. is you know, still relevant. I there's respect DJs the business. I, there's DJs I call about artists that I'm connected to, and they be like, all right, how much? That's the first thing they say. Yeah, yeah. They don't even listen to the record, yeah, right? Yeah, they like, yo, how they much? Yeah, yeah. So when they talk, oh, oh, for the love and for the cult, they cut that shit out. I know, know? Flex, I know Flex for a fact don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Master yeah. Flex don't do that. He old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, shout out to K Slay. Yeah. Shout out to K Slay. Yeah, well, shout out to Slay. Yeah, yeah, rest in peace. peace. Shout, out to Slay. shout out to Flex. All right. Is I remember you supposed to sign with the commission? Huh? Is it true you were supposed to sign with the commission? It was it was talks, man. It was talks. Again, you know, uh, big rest in peace. A Kate, on occasions, he have stopped by the way, mm -hmm. and have built on uh, doing the, what the plan was. Though. What the plan was, he, absolutely. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've seen other interviews and shit. I mean, I don't know. You know, when other people get what other people convers the conversation is the conversation, but. Yeah, that was the conversation as far as commission. Um, Jay was supposed to be a part of uh, uh, Big, myself, um, AZ. AZ. Yeah, who are the, who are the members Foxy. of the commission? Now, AZ, see, Jay Z, Biggie. I can't, I you. can't really, I can't say for a fact, right? Because my only conversations was with Big and what his plan was. Which was? Right? Tell us the plan. No, Tell the me. plan was uh, we all do some Brooklyn shit. Like, uh, uh, again, look at every... the round table. Look at the Jay Z yeah. dead president round the table. The dead president was big, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the barber shop. Even though that you know was Jay I mean? video, Big still called that out. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And reached out to. Right. Every, everybody made sure so. the, the head captains at was the time at the was at this table. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And. But prior to that video shoot, the conversation was taking place. 
Mm-hmm. Right? I I was never in a room with nobody else other than Big. I can't even remember who else. And I, I'm assuming, I'm going to just assume Little C's because he was always with him. Right. Right? Um, but they used to come through and check us. Shouts to Junior Mafia. You know? Mm-hmm. Shouts to Junior Mafia. Right. Um, so that conversation happened a few times. And then we went on, we did the, the Ready to Die promo tour. Um, and we was doing spot dates. So we would meet in South Carolina, then come back. We'd go up here and be in North New York Carolina, and fucking North Rochester. And then yeah. we'd come back and meet him in North Carolina and do some. So that's what it was. But the flair was dope. The flair, mm-hmm. you, you know, the energy mm-hmm. was great. We got a dope, we had a dope show at, at Club Images um, in North Carolina in Fayetteville one night. One night we went up there, we opened up. Shit was Packed to the gills, we tore shit down. Little Mo, I let, met Little Mo in there. Shouts to Little Mo. She was Monique at the time. Um, <laughs> um, and um, uh, uh, we we tore the stage up. Big came out, tore the house down, and then he called us back on stage so we can freestyle and shit. We closed the show out. Everybody, me, him, Trey, this is some somebody yeah. else, maybe. Freestyle and close out the show. Somebody got that motherfucking tape somewhere. <laughs> did, y'all, did y'all ever have like uh, battles and stuff like that at that time? Like, I mean, obviously there's street battles and stuff. You battle neighborhood cats or whatever. But as far as you know, with Big and Junior Mafia and all these other elements of, of rappers that were yeah. highly competitive at the time, mm-hmm. did y'all ever have like ciphers where y'all battle? Oh, we had ciphers. Plenty of ciphers. Yeah, that was my thing right there. Right. I had ciphers with everybody. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a crew that I didn't have a cipher with. Right. And I mean what was the most like the, the most yeah, the most intense, the, the the one that stood out like yo, this the one right here is for the one that stood out for me is with just me and X. Mm-hmm. You and DMX? DMX? Yeah. God wow. bless. Oh well, shit, shouts to X. So tell, tell us so. about that. Rest in peace, yeah. DMX. Yeah. I mean, some of them don't even know he Trey got a record with DMX. That's <clears> crazy. Put it out. Um, Nah, I, I never. Nah, put it he out. never put it out. Never put it out. Oh, you, you know, but he got a record with him. Shit, go. Um, what? What is it? It's, it's called a heist. heist. Yeah, it's no, called. I'd rather a heist. hear it. I'd rather it's you gangster. put it out. We'll That's let you hear it off. Gym, right? off yeah. Somebody leaked it on YouTube. It's up there. On YouTube. Oh yeah. <laughs> so how was that? How was that battle? I mean, it was. It was like What's it was dope. Like I mean, I went up there. Um, Def Jam had me go meet up with him. Um, that's when he was coming to Def Jam. <clears throat> they was doing artist development for him. And we were just going up there. They wanted me to listen to his songs and just see where he was at, mm-hmm. just musically, you know. This so, is before. This is the first me. album. Okay, this, this is a this, flesh They wasn't even paying attention to. Let's be it's real. Dog, they wasn't paying attention. Thank you. They wasn't paying attention to X. Let's be real. So I love X. X pushed from Get At Me Dog on his own. Like they went to the tunnel and shot that mm-hmm. independent, you know. Then when that dropped. Def Jam paid attention to it afterwards. You know what I'm yeah, you had to do Bring the leg work. For that. You had to yeah. do the leg Me work. X, we had long talks, like sitting there, you know, like going over his music and stuff like that before the album dropped and everything. And he used to just be like, Trey, they ain't gonna understand me. I just came from this other label. They ain't understand me. And I'm like, nah, they got more artists over here that understand hip hop, that, hmm. that knows what you're saying. You understand what I'm saying? So he took that, you know. And he was just always just humble with his music, with his stuff, but he was aggressive. And that's mm-hmm. what I loved about him, just sitting there going back and forth with him. We sat in there and it was just management in there and his production wise and you know, mm-hmm. all of them was in there. Mm-hmm. Big up Rafik and them, they was there as our man, you know, our management, his management was there. And we went, we was in there for about at least like eight, nine hours. God, you know what I'm saying? So we was going back and forth for at least about two, three hours just in the room just so we could learn each other. Mm-hmm. That's what we was doing, we was learning yeah. each other. He didn't know nothing about me, I didn't know anything about him. I wanted to hear his flows, he wanted to hear mine, mm-hmm. and all we was doing was switching flows up while we was rhyming. Mm-hmm. And he was like, God damn, how many flows you got, dog? And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and what, what, was, what was crazy, because we had, we had met them prior yeah. in, uh, in Yonkers. At my man shows. had a, yeah, my man had a, a store in the square and you know he was he was a a, a hustler and he produ- he produced one of my records called Glocks on Cock. Wow. It was the only record on the album that Dion Kenny G and yeah my man Kenny G Big God rest him. So. <clears throat> and they was throwing a show up there mm-hmm. 
They say, oh, yo, this group from up here, yo, they call the Warlocks, Warlocks. yo, and boom. Yo, mm. these niggas is the shit, blah, blah, blah. And we like, all right, you know, we from wherever. And, and it was Dark Man X. And, and Dark Man oh, X, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was. Dark and, Man um, X and the Warlocks. They, mm -hmm. they got up there. They got busy. Yeah, they Nigga, they got down. busy. They, got, they, they tore got, down right. and all that shit. I said, oh, all right, these some motherfuckers mm. from Yonkers. Okay, we're going to have to, you know, <laughs> get, get in our bag and get busy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just never stayed and, and, in competition. Right after that show, we went outside and... We were freestyling. Everybody was freestyling. There was uh -huh. so many people going at, you know, going at them. They was going back and forth. We stood on the side for a second watch for a minute. And then we was like, all right, we out. You know, just breaking out. Because the crowd was just getting a little too crazy. Is this yeah. before or after you signed the Def Jam? This before. before. This before. before. Way before yeah, Def Jam. Way before. What, what, yeah. See, with this level, what most people will hear, with this level of success that you're having, touring on your own, mm -hmm. making records on your own, you self-contained. DR period is coming up with some of the best beats at that time in that era. Mm. Period. Hands down. The man, everything he touches is like a classic right. record that still keeps ringing off. It wouldn't seem like you had to go mm. and sign to it. But you know what? At, at those times, the way the machines were set up, you had to go that way. Or it you was just going to be drowned. Yeah. It was, it was just what it is. Is that so? Let's just be real mm -hmm. with it. It's just listen, what it is. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something. You, know? you independent... You creating, you carving a niche, because this is what happened. I'm going to just tell you what happened. Big business. You, you carve a niche with your own paper and your own blood, sweat, and tears, right? You just said from the beginning of this conversation that Def Jam picks up an artist mm -hmm. from who has already created a... A book. Has came from something right. that was already established from remember, however it got established. We were number right? one. Broken Lane was. I was number one with Smooth. We ain't even get to Broken right. Lane. No, I yeah, we ain't get there yet. Yeah, but but again, Jam, right, right. But again, as far as carving that niche, artist development and all that, you know, they wasn't just. Saying, hey, you got a deal, and then now you're just on stage and all that shit. It's like phases you got to go through. You know, that's how a lot of motherfuckers get signed and then come out and they don't know what to do, how to move, and, and they get caught up and get all fucked up and trapped up, right? But getting back to them, yeah, he was, they fed off of what the niche that we created, right? Mm -hmm. We couldn't, they didn't sign us. Um, they didn't sign me, but they said, oh shit, it is a lane for hustling. It is a lane for this guy to say crack and drugs and all that shit. Cause we couldn't say that shit on the radio. Yeah, we were just talking talk about that, that shit. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, you couldn't say none of that shit. Before the interview, they'd be like, yo, don't say this. Don't or say give that. You a list. You can't say this. Or what you uh -huh. can't say. You know. So, <laughs> so that's crazy. You know. Yeah. But Mega, would, when you think about it, real, my fault, Mega, when you think about it, can you name five independent artists that did bigger than five major artists at that time? That's, that's, the answer is no. Right, exactly. The answer is no, with the exception of like maybe, I, I can't name five, too short, I know, stayed independent for a good chunk of his career. What about right. Master P? Master oh, P yeah, started off, yeah, yeah he started yeah, off he started doing, doing, doing I know it, E-40 yeah. was running independent for yeah. a while, he was a big proponent, but most of the Bay, was in the yeah, that was on the west. But we, I can't, I different. can't talk about, yeah. I can't talk Jay? about East Coast. Jay, signed. Jay went and yeah. got signed. Mm -hmm. He started yeah, off he got, indie, but right. he, like the it was he, he was indie first, right? Yeah, a lot of indie first. The beauty of him indie signing first. though was he was able to remain him and with a ten million and do bonus. him. This way, you know what I'm saying? But this way, he got, he got oh, turned down from this everybody though. First though, huh? yeah, they he got, got turned down, down from everybody. Then, yeah, first. they like, hey, fuck it. But this is what everybody felt and realized. A lot of artists that signed when they did sign to the majors that came from independent, you know, they signed for a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, how how can't you blow up from that? Like, let's be real. Right. Like, some niggas was getting the chain in the car. Let's, let's be real. I mean, uh, some niggas were getting that, 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 right. that was the artist under the artist. Yeah, yeah was niggas wasn't that. getting that you bag. You understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it was a lot of labels like that, that signed with the major that yeah. got multi millions. Mm -hmm. So you was able to run your record label correctly right, and right, run right. your shit a right. certain way. We never you came in piggybacking. So let's be real. We never came in on a piggyback of somebody or somebody throwing us a handout and say, oh, uh, uh, it was all 
grind the team. Organic the structure. Team. Yeah. Absolutely. The DR absolutely. period. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, DR period. Yeah, absolutely. DR period was the scientist as far as crafting the music. Right. Right? And it was other people in position, like I said, my man Rafiq and Devon. Right, 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 right. These, uh, then I had this, soldiers then I, yeah, <laughs> I, that I, was I really boy, running hard. My, my man, man knowledge, knowledge as well. You know right? Everybody just like came independently, yeah. like, out, you know, yeah. putting up money to put out records, singles, and things like that. See, yeah. this this goes back to something. I, I'm glad we I'm glad we have you guys in the room to actually like really nail this point home. Yeah. We've been talking in this room for a long time about how there was no real independent scene in NYC. We talk about that, not compared to the Bay, not compared to Texas where artists can function, have great careers with no backing from a label whatsoever. Shout out to Paul Wall, Slim Thug, all them boys. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, get yeah. It they in. was doing it, yeah. Independent. But remember, we always have these discussions and I talk about how the labels purposefully squashed out the independent of scene course. in NYC yeah. because all the labels are here. Right. right. So <laughs> it, it does not benefit them to let loan sharks right. and these right. exactly. right. crews flourish Period. on their watch to the point where they're now competing with the guys that they just signed for a bunch of money. You got to think I can, about I either got to go get competing. him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or I got to squash the right. whole, I got to get them out of here. We was right. already competing because we was already on tour. It shouts why, to why a lot of them wasn't on tour. Yeah. I, you know, I don't want to name names, but it was a lot of big artists I used to sit with. Used to be like, y'all just coming from Europe? And we like, yeah, they, they on their third album. They like, yeah, they yeah. Been to Europe but we were shaking the movement. Yeah, yeah we were shaking the movement. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it was regardless. Yeah. Like, we was out and about. You know Geography wise, I mean, New York is small compared to Texas and California. Facts. Yeah, you think yeah. about these other states that, that have got a lot of independent land. artists. Right. Like, and it's highly competitive on this, and it's the birth of hip hop. Right. So yeah, everybody right. has their own unique style. And the only way you're going to know who's who on the independent route is if, you want, if your feet is on the ground. Mm -hmm. If you're on the street, like, all right, you got to go over to Mad Wednesdays to go battle smooth mm -hmm. and trigger. You got to go over here to do you this. Lit when you get all the Paul's old lounge, all the Yeah, yeah, Paul's old lounge, Lyrics' yeah. lounge. Shout, oh, shout out to them. Danny. Yeah, shout, shout out to Danny. Lounge. Yep, yep, that's right. Definitely. I mean, I, I, I love the what it cost us. Sometimes I wonder if it was worth it. Mm. You dig what I mean? What it right. costs. Right. Every, everything right. costs. Every right. move you make costs. Mm. Right. It's going to yeah. cost you something. Right. Getting talent like Jay-Z, getting talent like Trigger the Gambler mm. by way of the whole unit, getting mm. talent like Mace and Locks and DMX, like we got those, we got these monumental, groundbreaking, genre forming artists and we gave them to the world and it was at the price of New York's independent music scene. Mm, yeah. mm -hmm. Indeed, you know I mean? wow. Yeah, yeah, the college, yeah. college yeah. radio. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Stretch and Bob. Like yeah, where, shouts. Oh, man. Where I would was... hear Trigger mm -hmm. and, and yeah, Smooth yeah. going off mm -hmm. freestyle yeah, wise. Those right. radio stations that them. you didn't yeah. know how to find. Yeah, right. yeah. Somebody you had, had to tell you where, where it was. In. Yeah. And you hear this dude going nuts. Mm. And now New York does not have an indie scene as the game has right. turned to lean on independent music. Right. Right. New York doesn't have an indie scene. Right. 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 Well, and this right. is the this this era that yeah. that these dudes came from was the turning point mm -hmm. where they, where I believe I've always believed the labels specifically said, "Okay, yeah, we, we got to stop this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. We and and the way to right do now. that, and the way to do mm -hmm. that is manufacture or not. I some have manufactured. Carbon copies, or they find somebody else who got that same niche, and then you know it's about you know programming, right. marketing, <laughs> promotion. And they, and they shut you down know, a lot of and I books. sell you on this man uh -huh. who right. never did it, nice. a thing in his life, mm -hmm. but this imagery. Sounds right. And this, sounds all good. of this shit sounds so right that you won't buy into it. Right. Anyway. You know what I mean? But the difference so, between then and now is the, the advancement of technology, too. Yeah, right. absolutely. Like, everybody during that has time, access now. Niggas was, I niggas was putting up posters. All Texas yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was oh, groundwork. At the time. You had the street yeah, teams yeah, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, now, now I can go to the studio, drop go on six, social media, six, and just, I can drop a 16-bar verse with just a hook and post it. 
Put and about 5,000 behind it exactly. for advertisement. Right. And the label's going to be like, well, them numbers is doing good. We can uh-huh. turn that 5,000 yeah, into 5, to 5 million. million. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Call them up uh-huh. to the office. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's different mm-hmm. now. It ain't, it ain't the same way it used to be. Yeah. Y'all did yeah. a lot of yeah. groundwork yeah. With, yeah. with Big and yeah. Jay. Mm-hmm. Did y'all did in, do any music with them? I didn't, man. You I had didn't. the Hustler. You know, Jay. I know I, Jay was supposed to got on a remix to that. Yeah. Is yeah. it a reason why he didn't get on that remix? Nah, you know, it was... I, I think it was the politics behind the curtain. Um, everybody was running at the time. Like I, I was, I was recording the album, um, actually trying to get signed, and we was missing each other on the cross. And I, I can't remember who was like the contact. But that, that that record never came about. And I wanted the record to come about because right. again, like I said, you know, from my perspective, they was they was cleaned up already. Like at that mm. point when they was back on the scene, they was cleaned up already. Like they knew the business, they had, you know, went through whatever they went through, and they knew exactly where they wanted to go and where we were still trying to figure it out because right. Again, we had everybody was coming from either the penitentiary or right out of the street to learn this new wave that we going to try right. and we going to try to make brand pop. New. You know right. what I mean? Brand everybody brand new. My whole team. And learning as they go. Learning as they go. And shouts to the team because they still my team. They learned a lot. They doing a lot. You know, shouts to them. Yep. But... Yeah, I had to learn. I learned it with my team. You know, we could have, Trigger and I could have definitely like sidestepped when that sh- we was at the peak of our career. We could have been like, oh, let's go here. Let's go fuck with this person. Let's go do this. But again, we like, we we a family, one. And then our brothers, like we, these are brothers for real. You know, when mm-hmm. the cameras go off and all that shit, everybody got real life shit they dealing with. Mm-hmm. Shit ain't all, you know, you know. Saint the video, you know what I'm saying? So we like to keep it like that. You know what I'm saying? Our foundation is super solid. Right. So did you run so, into Jay after that? You did you I never casual? ran into I, I never ran into him. Um you know when when the guy started look and I respect it. Look, he from the old school. Nigga, surround yourself with, with the people you love and trust and fuck everybody else. You know, mm-hmm. so it ain't nothing personal with me. I'm sure if I ever ran to him and shouts, if he ever see this, it was, uh, you know, we doing our own independent shit still. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we can get an alley oop. We ran into him. <laughs> you know, we, don't, we don't want no handout. We ran into nutty yeah. professor yeah. shit. Yeah, the nutty Towards professor shit. shit. Yeah, nah, yeah, but it, like I'm saying, yeah, it's all yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's, chop it up. it's no other shit. Not to work. Not <laughs> yeah, it's not to work. Not work. It's yeah, just yeah, like comrade shit. You know, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's no, it ain't no, no, no. No funny, no funny shit. You know what so, I'm saying? So I so think tri- that would have been crazy for Brooklyn to commission. You know what I mean? AZ, Smooth Trigger. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. J Big. That was crazy. And y'all was the top niggas. Yeah. Elite niggas in Brooklyn at that time. Yeah, you know yeah. I, th- I think that yeah. would have been gangster. Shouts to, you know who I forgot to mention? I mean, I got to mention these dudes because these niggas is, was intricate. Shouts to half a mil. Rest I don't know peace, if y'all, 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 y'all some real peace. Brooklyn oh heads. Y'all know half a mil. That was that was my homie when you was talking about spa sessions and all that. Mm-hmm. That that was one of my dudes. I used to love sparring with him. Mm-hmm. Um, my man Jam, God God rest his soul. He was a hot boy, mm-hmm. nigga, super dope. One of the dopest. <clears throat> I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. You know they took him out early. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But him and I had Glocks on cock together. That hook and all that. That was supposed to be me and his shit. Um, so when I did Glocks on Cop, mm-hmm. that shit was more like a homage to him. You know what I'm saying? Right. So shouts to him. But yeah, I just want to... Yeah, uh, so bu- business-wise, Trig, right? After you signed your deal to Def Jam, and, and again, I know that y'all was still learning the business at yeah. the time. At any point, did, did, did y'all say to yourselves, like, you know, maybe we should try to move in this distribution aspect or... A, a P and D, you know, a production and distribution deal instead of it just being an artist deal or maybe some type of label deal. Was y'all education of the business up at that time? Yeah, or was it, y'all it still was learning? because when we signed a Def Jam, I signed the, the third rule, party, right? Do production deal. 
through oh, Next so Level, it through DR, through to Jeff which Jam. was our okay. production deal through DR. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we had hands on. Mm -hmm. We controlled the budgets and everything. Right, mm -hmm. right. We yeah, yeah, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. You know, which was great because yeah. because again, D had the house, meaning he was he had the music and the you know, in the facility. And you know, we were supplying all of the heat. The music and, and, <laughs> and, and the artists. It, yeah, and it and it worked. My man Rafiq was running around. Trying to well, he they was getting signed again. Trey got signed, Christ got signed. My man Ron Record got signed. He got signed to Loose yeah, Cannons. We was on four um, major deals at that time. But then you know a production company. Yeah, but mm. you know, look, mm. everybody. That's different. Was totally learning. Different. I mean, let's and, be real. And, 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 and <laughs> they fucked coming, up a lot of money. They was coming to Rafiq, man. They was yeah. coming to Rafiq, getting knowledge from him. A lot of the industry dudes because we was one of the first companies that had artists that were signed to different majors right. at that time Still under, under a production indie umbrella. and in right. the umbrella. Mm -hmm. right. You understand? Right. So the Puffies, all of them was coming to us. Let's just be real. Yeah, we met to everybody. The, right? Run DMCs, all of them was coming to the to the studio, sitting down with Rye, asking them how he did it. To move independent. And to to, 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 to do that. To, you to was learn under how to get artists I under was, them and yeah, things I was like under, that. I was and under do profile. And do a production. I yeah. was under profile. Profile, shouts yeah. to Will Fulton. Um, he up. he would he would come to all the dirty spots. Yeah. And I mean, you know, our music, our music yeah. was was that rowdy shit. I right? already know. But so, he was there. So we was, was he was there, like Word all up. in the dirty spots, like you know, a a a cheerleader. You know, in 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 a cool term. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. You no, know, no, no funny have, shit. Have we gotten to where? Broken language kicked in yet? No, yeah, no do that no, on break. We gonna no, we no. gonna take a we gonna take a five, five minute, minute break. break. When right. we come back, we gonna start from that and move up. I I told him, um, yo, you can say some shit for me, yo. Uh, 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 uh. So he went in the, on the booth, you know, in the booth, and said some shit. Yeah, Mike Tyson, man. Uh, um. Punk, some shit. Rock boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tear your guts out, some shit. Dr. Got he probably got it. If he saved all this shit, he got that. But that was a crazy. That was a crazy moment. Just out of the blue, I pull up to the light. Fucking Mike Tyson right there. I'm like, oh shit, yo, come to the studio, <laughs> yo, good. Word the mother. He like this nigga in a German helmet. Tank top, little shorts. <laughs> he had some OG nigga. You could tell he was strapped up. Some old nigga, he gray and all that shit. Mm. Behind him in the Range Rover and shit while he ride the three wheel and shit. Dude, he was just all over the motherfucking place. I said, look at Mike Tyson, man, damn. But what was so crazy about our neighborhood, you could touch motherfuckers because Big Daddy Kane used to come through. He used to go see Scoob and Scrap. But the bins used to be outside, and so I'm like, oh, this shit, like they made it touchable. And then my man Bam, he used to fuck with Juice Crew, yeah, and, and shouts to rest in peace to Granddaddy IU. Um, but he used to take us to his crib, and then we IU, we used to go hang out with Juice Biz Crew and, and all of them, yeah, yeah. Biz. I was supposed to write for TV Biz. Swan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Man, TJ Swan. Them back in the days. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of fucking just sunk in history. You know what I'm saying? You know, we ain't really out there, out there, you know. But Mike Tyson used to stay on Saratoga because he used to fly the pigeons yeah. on Park Place in um, Saratoga. Saratoga. Mike, right. Yo, Mike Tyson is a. Mike was yeah, solid. But, but yeah. by the plazas, like, like he used to fly them yeah, shits yeah. right there. But he was a staple in the hood, like you know. I mean, he was a world champion. You know, um, we got a lot of champions from Brownsville. Yeah, Zab, yeah. Bo, Zab, yeah. Tyson. You know, um, mm -hmm. um, Briggs. Come yeah. on, can't forget oh, Briggs. That's my champ. man. Oh, yeah, that's, pull up. Kenny, that's right, pull champ. Up. Let's go, champ. You gotta pull up. Right. Let's go, <laughs> champ. Yeah, <laughs> that's we the bumped, homie we right there. Into him outside SOB. Oh, yeah, SOB. Yeah, he got to come. Up, up, he gotta yeah. come. Pull up on these dudes, man. They good. They good that's brothers, right, man. man. Pull yeah, up. Let's talk about it. Right. Yeah. The, the Tyson Fury and Ganu fight just happened. We could 
Yeah, yeah. We just we just seen it. We can talk combat. I see it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, just watching yeah, it's just, it's just I can't oh, talk about it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> y'all got can't all these. Can't judge a man. <laughs> y'all got all these stories from the neighborhood being the embodiment of local celebrities. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the dudes yeah. that everybody know, everybody's cool with. All mm-hmm. these people are coming through, just kicking it, chopping it up, Mike Tyson. Mm. But I can't imagine what life must have been like after broken language. Here. Mm. Oh man! Like I picture your life beforehand, yeah. where you got it good. You got right, it right. way better than most, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Right, right. The drug right. dealers without the drugs, like you just right, really right. living, exactly. and everybody right. loves you. Well, but then broken language hits, mm. and it's literally going everywhere, and everybody wants to rhyme like that because nobody has ever rhymed like that, and mm-hmm. you've always been about your pen. Mm-hmm. But now everybody's focused, and then they go back and look at your old catalog, which is what always happens when you get a yeah, hit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Soon as you get a hit, everybody right. looks at the, yo, where the fuck? I've never heard of this dude. Right. Yo, this is crazy. This is right. crazy. This, right. Well, they've right. been out. Oh, this is crazy. This right, is crazy. right, right. Tell, walk me through. Let's start with the creation of the record itself. Mm. Walk me through the concept, like how you came up with it, mm. how you decided to do it, and then what life was like after the fact. Well, shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> yeah. Well, we're getting well. Trying to get on smooth album for me, that's what it was. Um, really? Yeah. Even um, then? Yeah. At that. At was that it like time, automatic? Like, it wasn't automatic. Nah, it wasn't automatic. Absolutely well, wasn't it not. automatic? Because he had to show and proof. Because I, mean, I still, I was doing a lot of <laughs> shit. I wasn't. He wasn't, wasn't that just focused. focused. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh. So this was this was more of a. a brother thing, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He had to kind of earn his spot to get in. Yeah. I know he could get busy. We was we used to do it in the hallway and do all right. that shit. But to get on the album, you know, he got to now to me, dedicate yeah, his time to That me. was a big thing for me too, because yeah. it was just, I know we can, we can rap or I could rap with him or stuff like that. But when he was doing his album, I wasn't, I didn't even think of an album. Wow. I right. didn't have he an just, album on my mind. Right. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, it was more like once I got to around Smooth and he was doing his album, and I'm sitting there and DR, like, you know, Christ is on the hook, mm-hmm. a hustling and stuff like that. And DR's just like, yo, what's up, man? You getting on this album or what? And I'm like, nigga, what, what is it? He like, well, you got to come with something. He like, a Smooth mm-hmm. album, crazy. I'm like, I know. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, I got to come with some, give me a fucking beat. So you did you saying? teach him? Wait, 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 I need to hear this yeah. story. And so, you know, and and so DR's like, all right, I'm gonna give you a track. So DR gave me the beat, but it wasn't the full boom, 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 boom. It had no changes, nothing in it. It was just bump, 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 bump. And so I was like, oh shit. So I took it home, got home in the crib, sitting there. I'm at the table and shit. And um my little sister had mad fucking papers everywhere because she used to always follow what smooth used to do. He'd have mad papers of writing and shit and stacks and all that. My little, my little sister used to just write stuff and keep it in stacks of paper. So I'm sitting at the table and I'm just going through paper and I'm writing. I'm like, damn, I gotta write this fucking song. And then I looked on her paper and she just had um, base your eyes on the guy. Right. Mm. That's what that's what <laughs> so said. Needed. Right. Yeah. So you bitch your so, baby sister to start so, this boom. classic like <laughs> So so here's the funny shit because Trig was stopping. Funnier see, than that? Because that's stop, pretty funny. I mean, well, I mean, this is how all how it marriaged up. Mm-hmm. Um Trig would stop and see DR. Then when I'm when I'm ready to stop and see him, whatever I'm doing, because mm-hmm. we're not always together, you know, once so I stopped to see DR. He said, oh, I got this track. Boom. He gave me the track. We, I get to the crib. He playing uh-huh. the track. He uh, he start going in. And I'm like, hold up. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, all right, let me go in. And then right. we said, let's stick to this rhyme pattern. Like, so we, he set we, it we, off with that rhyme. He you set, set it, it off. It with off. That rhyme pattern. Well, we. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. When he did but, his rhyme, he came back and rhymed it to me. And it was totally two different things we was talking about. He was talking about the hustling. I was talking about it. hustling shit. And, he and was I was talking, talking about street shit. Yeah, yeah. Of it. But we specifically said, we going to do, we just going to do this. This is the, right. the, 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 you know, we're freestyle that shit in the hallway. 
just freestyling. Christ shouts to Christ. DVL is Christ. You were bang on the wall. Bang on the wall, six. shouts to Red and, and the whole ruckus click. Um, but we would be doing that shit. And when we got to be, once we wrote it at the crib, we was like, oh, this shit is crazy. So when we went down there and we let D hear it, and he was like, oh shit. So he started adding more shit to the beat. And once he added the changes and all that shit, we recorded it and then sat back and was like, what the fuck is this? Because it was nothing, absolutely nothing out there remotely close to that at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just even listening back to it, I'm saying, yo, this shit is fucking golden. This is going to be the record that I can get my brother signed or at least notice. You know what I mean? Right. And again, we were shopping that shit to all the labels. That shit, Right. We packaged that shit. Side. Right, Remember, exactly. We, it, it, of we purposely A-side. put it. Hustling. We purposely put broken language on the B side of hustling. When profile came into the picture, they was like, "Yo, you know, we'll let you stay. You, we'll let y'all put out whatever y'all feel is the strongest record y'all want to put out, and we won't change nothing." So they was a small label, but they had major distribution. Mm. So while the majors was booming, then here come this little independent label. Boom! Record just took the fuck off. You know, and thanks, thanks to it was a lot of DJs that helped. Craig G, Stretching Bobito, um, mm-hmm. Red Alert. Uh, Red Alert, yeah, yeah, you know. Bugsy, yeah, all of them. I don't the, think the it's not a organic, DJ that didn't play that. I was about to say, you well, I mean, it had to. The, the DJs who didn't play that. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> look, right. I'm going to tell you, at the beginning, nah, it wasn't like that. I'm telling you. Well, they like, picked what, up steam. It, that's it, when it they start snatching. The, the broken language. Now, they said, oh, this shit is dope. But again, you got to remember, radio, they wasn't dang they know what the, the fuck to do with it. We were saying too much wild shit mm-hmm. to even think it'd be on the radio. The cross break in Bible ripple. Come on, man. Come on. I mean, <laughs> we are saying the most worst shit ever. You know what I mean? I but uh, we were trying to <laughs> say so the we, most worst shit out Yeah, yeah. We purposely were saying the most worst shit out the most worst shit at yeah. that time. So when yeah, y'all when y'all that. recorded the record, y'all was in the studio together. Yeah, we yeah. was together. So yeah, was y'all in the booth together going back and forth? Or was it well, like, yo, he, you go in, go he in, go then like, I go in. Um, uh-huh. But the booth was big enough. I mean, it was moments where we yeah, was in there together, together, sparring it up. Yeah, the booth was big enough for us to do that. Mm-hmm. But we knew prior to going down to the studio where he would leave off, where I would pick up, where, you know, yeah. we was already trading dialogue. So just going in, after he would lay his, his verse, we would listen. And then I know I'm going in next, but if I need to change something or I want to add something or whatever. So it was just, it was just like just doing, you know, like building a, a house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I, I trust, I trust his craft and he trusts my craft. Mm-hmm. And that shit just worked. And again, when when we heard it, we was like, oh, this shit, this shit, this shit is crazy. What's you the know? what's the like craziest thing that happened? Post broken language coming out, whether it's at a show, whether it's at another studio session, at mm-hmm. a club, like what's the craziest shit that happened after the success of that record? Oh, after the Wait, for us, for me, me doing Man, shows so in shit. um in the UK with three three point four million people. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah four yeah. million people, five million people. I was doing shows in uh, front of Eiffel Tower with, uh, with, with John Michelle Ja. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. yeah, one of the yeah. biggest musicians in the UK. Yeah, you know. Um, so those were some good moments for for me through. I, well, we had a hell of a good. I mean, we had ton, a great run. But you those know. were like royalty, royalty moments because of his family is in royalty. Right. Things like that. You know, just he was a hip hop fanatic to be out there to stay out in the Buckingham Palace to stay in all them places like that. You know what I'm saying? Brownsville, so, Brooklyn niggas up in Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Oh man, it, we done, we done crazy, tore up bro. London. We done, That's, man. I'm sure y'all was all, sh- all like across every country. We did every country you could think of, like especially as far as in the UK. 
Yeah, yeah, still, it was, I mean, was it times y'all was dolo? And you had to perform the record and Smooth wasn't there? Yeah, I did. I've done you that. You did Broken Language by yourself the whole through the whole record. <laughs> wow. Man, the whole record. Yeah. Yeah. People be looking at me like, 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 this, like you, you yo, like, oh, are you crazy? Even one time, just even our own team, like, it was a, um, about a couple of years back, probably about three years back, we did a show and, and Ice, it was like, yo, you got to do Broken Language. And, and me and Brady was there and, and I'm like, oh, man, Smooth ain't here. And they like, well, people are like, well, we, I'm gonna do smooth part, and I'm like, nah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I'm yeah, I'm like, I got you it. Do that shit. And so Mickey, like, Mickey Benson, like, he like, don't mess up, Trey. I'm like, mess up. I'm like, all right. So I get up there, I do the whole song through, but when I'm fin- almost finished, I turn and look, and they all just staring at me like. <laughs> don't believe it. Yeah, like dude, yo, I wanted, it was a moment for me because when I turned and looked, my whole team was just looking like they couldn't believe it. Usually they say the song, you know. Did yeah. you ever do that smooth? Well, um, yeah, it's, it's been places where I've you know been in the spot and got called to the stage mm-hmm. or some shit like that. But um, you know, I, we be keeping shit in the stash. We got a bunch of that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so we, you know. The follow up. Keep a bunch of that shit. The follow up. My brother, my ace. Yeah. yeah. How did that come about? Um, Definitely uh, another record that I said I I just wanted to kind of show the love between me and my brother. Right. You know, uh, uh, and just and just play on you know verbal gymnastics. You know, we we was. I say we was the first to do forwards and backwards. We was throwing right. each other. Like I throw him a line, he'll say it backwards to me. I throw it back to him, he'll say another line backwards to me, and we'll close out the show. Right. You can see that on broken language. You know, I'm, yeah, I mean, well, y'all spit the whole brother, verse forward. On and my then brother, spit the whole my verse backwards. Yeah, on my yeah. brother, my mm-hmm. I think we closed it. Dr. Period. Period. Dr. We, we are. We are. Oh, are we? No doubt. Doubt. doubt no. no. Y'all see nigga. Nigga, nigga see y'all. y'all. You know what's we, crazy? We, yeah, you know we, hold on, hold on. Yo, yeah, that was crazy, bro. Pop, please. Yeah, they, 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 they was the first to do it. Pop, please. They was the first to do it. First. Yeah, the first. Yeah, y'all, first. Y'all, y'all, y'all yeah. trying to moonwalk past extraordinary <laughs> shit to ask another question. Okay, we're not doing that. Like, <laughs> no, you know what's crazy is that uh, Joyner Lucas, shout out to Joyner Lucas. He's like one of my... One oh. of my favorite artists right now. But right. Mm-hmm. He just did a record not too long ago like that. Mm, dope. But dope. there's other artists after you guys, right. like Eminem right. and Nas. Right. Right. And, right, right. Like, so it just goes to show the influence y'all had. Absolutely. But y'all not being named and people not knowing this. Yeah. Right. Y'all right. are the creators of that backward flow. Right, right. right. Absolutely. I mean, yes. look. Even down, even down to the um, smooth specialty. did smooth did why before mm. Jada Kiss. Yeah. On Smooth first album, he got a qu- um, record called "The Question Is Why." Food for the answer, a food for thought. Absolutely. Right. And Kiss came out with "Why." Right. Uh-huh. So, right. do you think you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that yeah. Influence absolutely, came from that? absolutely influence. You know what I'm saying? Listen, you know, it's we all in the same round, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Jada Kiss ain't too big to hear Smooth a Hustler right. or like some shit. Nah, let's just be Hustler. real. I was, Smooth a Hustler ain't too yeah. big to hear something from Jada Kiss. Yeah. Like it oh, but but they, the they, they manage, they role manage. I used to tell us all the time, you know, yo, you know, X ride the whole tour with Smooth album in the deck. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. he don't want to, he don't want nobody taking it out. And you mm. know, this was something like they used to tell me because I used to go mm. and pop up at their video shoots and stuff like that. You know, Rough Riders had their video shoots. I pop up there and go on the set. You know, be on the bus, whatever like that with them. And um, they used to always tell me that they'd be like, "Oh no, nah, X stay with Smooth." Um, well, I'm shitting the whole. That's club. love. How did you How did you handle that specifically? I got a younger brother. I know he looks at some of the stuff I do, and and we talk back and forth, and he doesn't. I don't, do I don't know if you know how impressed I am with you, period. But like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he impresses the shit out of me. But mm-hmm. as a younger brother, right. I also have an older brother, rest in peace, Shake. And I used to watch the stuff he did. And the idea of stepping anywhere near his footprints mm-hmm. was kind of like, right. Mm-hmm. <gasps> okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it, yeah. you didn't do nothing lightly. And your brother's out here, right. known for his pen in a time when pens really mattered right. and mm-hmm. there were monsters mm-hmm. yeah. roaming the country, Jay-Z, Big mm-hmm. L, mm-hmm. and your brother's being yeah. mentioned with those same people and here right. you come. Mm-hmm. Right. What was... What, what, made me, what made me stand out different 
with all of them it was that I knew I was I knew what all of them was talking about in mm. their rhymes and how they was flowing. I was straight raw. I was mentioning names. <laughs> I mean, I would say the worst <laughs> shit you could think of. <laughs> and I and I knew my energy, how I would give it off. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was no one doing it. Mm -hmm. No one. So I knew that, okay, all of them have their lanes, but it's a lane that I'm going to create. There's a lane I'm going to go off. And Smoothies always say to me, yo, give me more. Mm -hmm. Or, yo, nah, I'm more harder. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm still like, well, what's hard? Right. But then, when <laughs> I, then when I got the whiff of just being on the stage saying the most rugged stuff and people reaction to the rugged stuff instead of the other things, the lyrical side that Smooth would go at, mm -hmm. that they would go, ooh, right. you know? And then off of my punchline, they would go, oh, mm -hmm, total mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. reaction. Cause mm -hmm. shit, y'all so, was saying in the nineties, they're saying now. They saying now. Like, yeah, like yeah, 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 I got this shit. I got the mad act at, at your, your bad act. act. Yeah, Niggas like, just rapping like that. Then. Right. Yeah. Well, right. well, but, well. You mm -hmm. was saying off yeah. camera, Smooth, my fault, not to cut you off, trick, about how uh, you know, Big did more money, more problems. Mm -hmm. yeah, plus, like, Dizette, James Russ on Trizac. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that came from those yeah. flows that... Yeah, I think, you know. I, I always thought, because I was talking to Smooth about uh -huh. it, I said, uh -huh. in, in, in the verse on there, I said something in the verse, I'm the big bad wolf, rapper's life sounds get, get took. took. I'm the reinforcer, crossing, crossing guard, guard, double crosser, crosser body bodyguard. Guard. You know, nice and nice and yeah, so... Mm -hmm. That was my when, shit. <laughs> and then when I started it, I, I came on, I got the mad act. At, at your bad act, act. is like, like that, that act. act. Um, yeah. So those flows like that was, you know, just something we was. I was trying out mm -hmm. to bring to the industry and bring something different, you know, because everybody was rhyming the same and stuff right, like right, that. Right. Mostly, if you ever hear me on any song I ever done, I never rhyme the same on that one record. Right. You mm -hmm. could never pull the same flow up on another song and say you rhymed the same. Do you feel like mm -hmm. you got your proper credit for it? Do you no. do, do the two of you feel like you got proper credit? No, not at all. The judge I don't. Yeah. Smooth do nah. at times. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna learn the day. I'm gonna learn the day. All right. I got, I got a different vibe on it, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. like people like people used to ask, you know, just are you better for not, you know, dropping certain things. I'm like, nah, nah. I was always happy from his success and being noticed of what he always done. Because he taught me how to rap. Right. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Plain so, and simple. Yeah, yeah. So I learned by watching all smooth stuff. And then he had different flows he would mm. do. So I would be like, well, shit, I'm not going to come in the game just having one, one style, one flow. So I'm going to switch it up and do different stuff. But mm -hmm. I like rhyming fast. He like rhyming a little more slower pace. Mm -hmm. So to put those together for me to slow it down a little bit too, I had to learn that slow flow. But you, you're being you. When we're sitting here talking about the people who have who you've influenced directly, like just the, mm -hmm. the people that Champ and Gat named mm -hmm. Biggie, Nas, mm -hmm. Emmett. These are goats. Mm -hmm. right. These are goats who Absolutely. we're Absolutely. saying borrowed directly or were influenced directly from what you guys were doing. We think that's dope. You could add Rick Ross yeah. in there too. Every I mean, day I'm hustling. Every I mean, day I'm hustling. I mean, no, wait, 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 wait. Every day I'm hustling. Let's fact check. Let's add, fact check. You can add all of them to um, it. You know, I, I, I did hustling in 1992, before uh, I went to jail. When we right. was talking earlier, I said I did three records. One of them was hustling. Right. My everyday lifestyle ain't nothing but a hustle. I don't know how many years later, but he did come out with Every day I'm hustling. 2006, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So every day I'm hustling. Every day I mean it's the same shit. I said my everyday lifestyle ain't nothing but a hustle. And he yeah. said, every day I'm hustling. This is mm. the same shit. He's a drug dealer, you know, but he, he's a kingpin. But you, I, you, you know, been, I wasn't you on that status. The, um, I was I was Cassidy hand to shit. hand. Yeah. I was hand to hand, yeah. you know, uh yeah. trying to feed the family. Trying to tell niggas stay out the street and all that kind of shit. I ain't coming in the game glorifying none of that because we was really doing that shit and mm -hmm. people was in jail and dying and you know all we through our trek. Out of it. All I'm through out of our it. trek, motherfuckers is dying and you know and we putting on the cool face. We doing MTV and all that <laughs> shit, you know. Meanwhile, motherfuckers is dead. We got a wake to go to right after this, then a funeral next week, and yeah. real shit. Niggas All get locked up. All the way from our up. first shows. 
Well, yeah, our yeah, first yeah. Shows, we yeah. got a you know whisper. Our friend got shot. First show. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm saying. It's so like, you know, again, we was, we, we, was that shit we more family. But that that brings me five. that brings me to an important spot because this record is now your key to a different life. You think what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's the life you've already had because you already hood. Mm-hmm. Everybody look, but now it's accelerated. Now the country, the, the whole the record's taking the country by right. storm. The show money goes up. Your status goes up. People spot you outside of Brooklyn, know yeah. who you are. Yeah, People spot was... you outside of the New York, know who you are. They right. spot outside of country, right. know who you are. Right. Now it's describe for me the lifestyle change because you still have one foot right. in the hood mm-hmm. where everything is. You don't want to leave that behind, but now this whole other life. There's movie auditions, all yeah, kinds yeah, of yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of like teaching when you out there around the world because they hit a record, but they still don't know you. Right. So on the stage, you're doing a record, and then you also kind of stop and explain to yourself where you're from and, you know, um, how we grew up and stuff like that. It's kind of like a movie, you know, explaining each record that, that comes on and then seeing a different nationality of people singing your record that don't even speak English. Yeah, you that know, shit was a trip. It's the trip <laughs> to see all these people that your tour bus going through these towns and people just on the side of the road just waiting for you to pull up and they singing your record in another language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't you audition to be pop? I to did. Play I did. Pop I, I auditioned to, to try to be uh to, to get in the movie, but you know, that didn't happen. I guess, you know, politics at hand. But what I did do is, I mean, let me tell you, this is behind, well, this would be public now, but um I don't know if a lot of people knew, but Tupac used to come to Brooklyn a lot. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and yeah. he used to go to this church called House of the Lords, right there on Bond Street and Atlantic Avenue. Oh, mm-hmm. Bagawanas. And Reverend Daughtry shouts to Dr. Pastor Reverend Daughtry. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> he um so when Pac got killed, you know, we was friends with Ice, Ice T. So we had, you know, we we talked a lot about it and then unbeknownst to me i didn't know that this pastor was connected to tupac like tupac would go to this specific church and this is the church where my dad went my uncle went um you know it's a it's powerful powerful environment for men Mm -hmm. you know what i mean you know um and we would do cool shit like shouts the supernatural he one of the homies, he came through, and we we used to put on shit for the for the young boys, and you you know just give them some real some real jewels. Mm-hmm. Now back to Tupac. <clears throat> so when he got when he his untimely demise, um, the Reverend reached out to me, and we went on like this radio tour on an AM station. Um, with the with the you know church uh networks and stuff mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. just to kind of bridge hip hop you know people who was just totally disconnected from hip hop right. right to hip hop you know through this passing you know so that was my you know once i didn't get the part you know mm-hmm. you know indirectly got blessed with being able to just kind of do the work. Right. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? So you I think never that met, was, you never met Pac. I, I met him met twice. Pop. He go a crazy ass story. I mean, I'm on 42nd Street with my homeboy. At, I mean, my homegirl. I got on like black shorts, some Jordans, and a red T-shirt. I swear to God, this fucking guy. I'm standing there watching this Asian guy draw this lady that's sitting down. He was there. Oh shit! See, he, boom. <laughs> So my homegirl goes, oh shit, diggle your brother. So I'm like, what the fuck? What? And it's him. He coming down the street. Even he on 47, we on 40 deuce. He got two other dudes with him. He had a red t-shirt on, black shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yo, you can't make this shit up, yo, I swear. And um I'm like, oh shit. Now it was a guy who I used to kick it with. He was an attorney. He lived in uh in uh 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 in Bed Stuy and shit, who knew Tupac. Um, that he used to tell me, oh yeah, my man Pac, he's doing this movie and blah, 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 blah. And so when I saw Pac, 
that was my conversation. You know what I'm saying? I said, oh, you know, I can't even remember this dude's name now. But I said, oh, you know so-and-so. I said, oh, shit, yeah, yeah, yo, that's a good brother. I said, yeah, yo, he my man. He going, you know, he said, all right, all right, cool, 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 cool. And, you know, we went our ways and shit. But he seemed like a solid dude. You know what, what I'm saying? Like, he, he ain't have to give me give me that conversation. Right. At going up to, to the above the rim set. With with one of my homegirls, I right? did people one, think you was pop when you went to the above nah the rooms? nah not at all not you know what's crazy my aunt my aunt Charlotte used to say that like when that when he first came out because we was wearing the bandanas and shit yeah. and, you know and when he when he came out my aunt was like oh yeah yeah you look like uh, uh. and from that point it was like even on my social hangout meeting the chick or some shit. That shit come up, you know. Oh, girl, you look like I'm like God. Uh, but now, when you did the pop, I was like, you wasn't, you like, was you like, wasn't, was you wasn't was mad at getting pops. Nah. <laughs> I mean, look, it's it's so mad at being got the earring in the nose, everything. There's gonna be pictures floating around, the smooth and the leather, like vest. Yeah, yeah, I had the bandana. Yeah, I had all that. This one, Pac was still no disrespect to him, you know. This one he was still doing the digital. Yeah, digital had the bait, yeah, with the, the with the with the, the tassel yeah, hat. The yeah, hat yeah. totally different. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Big all of them had pictures of of smooth like that and stuff. Well, and yeah, I remember we was down, we was doing the North Carolina tour, and smooth had on all beige, all beige, beige Tim's, beige bandana, mm -hmm. big bracelet. Big rain. Oh yeah, yeah, I can all pull that, that shit up. And that's big somewhere. Had that's the, the picture you got. Big with had the Versace yeah, 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 yeah. joint. Yeah, you know, the pop was they wasn't wearing all that. When, yeah. when we when we started to go to LA around that time, we started seeing them in that attire. You know was what it saying? was it hard to was it hard to maintain a foothold at home? Did anybody start treating you funny? Because you you absolutely not. Well, except <laughs> absolutely not. Except, except. It, listen, let me tell. I mean, yeah, you know, that happened. More <laughs> open, you know, a, a lot of open, you know, doors because we was the knuckleheads from the neighborhood, right? Yeah. So that whole dynamic changed, right? Everybody treat you different. Um, what was crazy for me was just the fame. All of a sudden, now as much as I was dying to be a rapper, like I ain't think it all the way through, right? Mm. I, I really didn't. Once they start saying my name on the on the radio, uh, appearing live, blah 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 blah. Dun, dun, dun. I'm like, oh shit, damn! Everybody know where the fuck I'ma be at tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All my now, ops. Now look, yeah. Now look, I ain't have ops because we ain't grimy. We mm. wasn't grimy. Mm. None of my homeboys Mostly was all grimy. The artists came Can, like yeah, we could go back to the hood. We just left the hood. Full G ain't and ain't, ain't, they ain't, ain't a nigga can tell mm. us where we can't go. But just that whole world of these niggas know. Now we have had situations, shootouts, whatever the fuck, whatever. We at the arc. This uh, my first show. Oh, I never forget it. Lit. First oh. show, yeah. One way in, one East way out. New York. <laughs> there it is. We on stage. Now, mind you, we had like neighborhood shit, you know, the different neighborhoods and shit. We at the show, it's all of the neighborhoods in this motherfucker. All of them. And we like, oh shit, we on stage, we warmed up. Like warriors. Yeah, like, like warriors, warriors out this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. We getting warmed up and shit, you know, we just finished a song or two. Then I'm like, hold up, I got to like, let these niggas know we recognize, right? Boom. Yo, cut the music. Hey, yo, shouts to all of the, the thoroughbreds in here. You know, we recognize we ain't on that time. You know, yeah, this the time we on. And we thought it was going to be a shootout and all that shit when we left, but it was just genuine love. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Dapping it up. Yo, congratulations. Blah, 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 blah. We ain't stay long, but we was gone. You know, um, <laughs> same way in LA. Yeah, yeah, same way in LA. LA showed us an immense amount of love. You know, you know, outside of Ice T, and then us connecting the dots with him. How did it, that it just, happen? It was, it was even flyer. How did it was even connected? flyer. Um, he came to New York. Yeah, at first, first we was in, we, we was, was at, at Howard. Right. Howard we was University. at Howard University. 
um, about the performance shit. How a just homecoming? How a homecoming. homecoming. And we we at the back, we we smoking and talking shit. And my man Bam goes, yo, what's a dude over here? Say he ice manager. So we look, it was Mickey Benson. Shout out to Mickey. And I said, all right, yeah, fuck it. Let him come through. He can't see, yo, yo, I just want to get at y'all, yo, blah, blah, blah. We said, all right, cool, yo, yo. So we exchanged numbers and then fast forward, Ice is at the radio station, Hot 97. And um, he like, yeah, yo, I I fuck with this little smoother hustler, blah, 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 blah. And one of my niggas came upstairs. We're in the session. We was probably like maybe four blocks from the radio station. Right. And he came upstairs. And say, yo, Ice T on a radio station, nigga, talk about y'all. We like, word? About what? <laughs> <laughs> they like, yo, yo, how he fuck with y'all? Boom, boom, boom. We like, word? Let's go see that nigga, yo. <laughs> boom, we pulls right up. So he come out. Yo, what up, what up? Oh, we dap it up. He like, yo, when y'all in LA, get with me. So, you know, at the time, we, we was fucking with Carl Kanak. Shouts to Carl Kanak. Um, and a few other motherfuckers from LA. Carl, bring your ass up here. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Definitely talk to him. Definitely talk to him. Godfather, Godfather. Deep, deep he pockets, Godfather. Man, right. Of that deep fly pockets. shit. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, we was going to check him. So when we went out there, we we checked uh Carl and then call Ice. Yeah. And then let him know we, we, was, out we was in town. And then what was crazy, we went to his house and shit. He had maybe he had a rainbow of motherfuckers in his house. Right? <laughs> we went upstairs. It was a rainbow of motherfuckers, all kind of ethnicity groups, right? All kind of shit. All yeah. kind of, everybody playing pool and all that shit. I said, oh, this shit is dope. So he like, yeah, where y'all performing at tonight? So we like, yeah, we over at so-and-so, What's so-and-so. That? He like, hey, yo, oh, so-and-so. Man. Yeah, that's your area tonight. So we we going, I guess there was this nigga's hood, right? Yeah. We going to be in that hood tonight. Now, mind, this back in the days, this pre World star, all that shit. So that gang shit was heavy. That's getting televised now was heavy. Was even heavier back then. You know what I'm saying? No cameras, ain't none of that shit. You know, so boom, you, you know. We performing we, in a gang land of heart. Yeah, yeah. We ended up going to that shit, of tearing it down. We didn't know he was coming, but as we in the middle of our set, right before Broken language and shit, we start going into that to close out the show. The fucking crowd start parting and shit. And it was jam-packed fucking crowd parting. And it was him. Maybe 50 niggas, him 100 and Booyah niggas. Tribe. Yeah, him and Booyah Tribe. Oh, shout out to Yeah, shout out to Booyah Tribe. Yeah, shout out, shout out, shout out. Um, shout out to the whole Man, group. they parted that motherfucking crowd. He jumped on stage. And the crowd just went. Extra berserk. Mm. He grabbed the mic. He closed out broken language with us. I ain't even know he knew the record, but it was it was genuine love. I'm like, damn, here go a, 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 a dude who I grew up respecting. I won't say idolizing, but admiring mm-hmm. style, you know. Yeah, I popped uh, into like in the music. whole nine yards. Yeah, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? And his shit was reality yeah, based. It was yeah. all reality based. So I'm like, all right, this dude is cool. And then we be, we just became we just became mm-hmm. friends. Cool. Yeah. What's crazy is that real, real quick, uh going back to what you said at the beginning of this mm-hmm. interview about like OGs, right? So Ice T is an OG. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you guys had a radio on the record. Might I mean who knows? A record you know on the radio. Huh? What you said? You, you said, said a, a radio, radio on, on the record. record is a record on the radio. Your record yeah, on the radio. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's it's moving and stuff like that. Y'all be in the age y'all are, y'all might not know how to move accordingly Navigate. or whatever yeah, the yeah. case. But Ice T, because he liked the record, mm-hmm. said, nah, I'm gonna fuck with y'all boys. Mm-hmm. Right. And then showed y'all some guidance mm-hmm. in some form of fashion. And that goes back to what you were saying earlier, like that's what's missing. Absolutely. Right, right now, because it's youngins following youngins. Absolutely. That's what's happening. A- absolutely. And, and then go ahead, yeah. Trey. And we also did an album together. Right, we did um, an album we together. SMG album we did, yeah, he, that yeah. we toured um, the whole Europe on our and, own. And we yeah. didn't put the album out yet. We put the album out after we came off tour. So we toured off doing, Brand you know, putting music. the album, you know, together and um, sold out all, all shows. That's crazy. That was 60 yeah. shows. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. And, 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 that, and that was after 
That was, I mean, I know people want to know why we stopped, right? We suddenly stopped. That's what I was about to get. That was my next question. Well, I mean, um, tragically, my my son mom's had passed away from an aneurysm. Super sudden. Boom. You know, what's crazy, I'm going to tell you just real quick, real quick, how how you embrace love, right? I'm going to tell you a story. So, boom. I met her when she was young. Um. Innocent, right? Mm-hmm. Boom. Start touring. Had a son with her in love, whatever, whatever. Boom. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, did the most worst shit in the world. She left me. Boom. Had another kid, which was great. I moved on with my life, which was great, right? But collectively, we had a son, right? So I would stop, do what I need to do, pick him up on the weekends, blah, 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 blah. So one day, his kid's mother called me and said, hey, um, could you stop and drop her off some aspirin? You know, so I'm like, fuck, man, right, yeah, all right, I'll do it, boom, I'll stop, drop the aspirin off. I never went upstairs, dude, you know, I would just give her a shit from, from, the, um, from the door. But this particular time, she leaned out the window and said, oh, you come upstairs, bring it up, so, all right, cool, I'll go up. Now, mind you, this is young love, Fast forward through all the bullshit, she became a woman, boom. So now we upstairs, now I'm upstairs. You know, we just start talking, you know, about everything. All how I was back in the days, all the wild shit I was doing, how dedicated she was and all that shit, right? Boom, I leave, I tell my man stutter the next day, yo, I'm, I'm gonna get with her. Uh-uh. Following day, my son called, oh, mommy just passed. I mean, mommy just fell out, hit her head. They taking her to the hospital. I get on the phone with the neighbor, oh, they going to Woodhall. I get to Woodhall, boom, she in the coma. Boom, the coma becomes something else. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I gotta go home, tell my son, he home sleep. I'm looking at him the whole night, like how the I'm gonna tell this guy, mm-hmm. you know. So we went through all of that. So from that moment, I was like, yo, I gotta chill with the music. I gotta dedicate all my time to this guy. He was mm-hmm. 10 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boom. So the industry took a back seat. You know, mm-hmm. I became right, right, a right. fan. I became, you know, I started watching shit and, you know, but, um, what kept me going was every motherfucking time I heard somebody knew they was doing broken language. <laughs> the beat. Word of my mother. I mean, <laughs> style with no style or have picked from the album. You know, you know, when you the creator or something, and then you know, by I was getting plucked. The same part of that, right after that, I lost my kid's mother. Right. right. Really? I have a set of twins. God bless their wow. souls. God yeah, bless yeah, souls. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, this was like five, six yeah. years later. Yeah. So, so when when you took a back seat, did you also take a back seat, or you kept going? Yeah, I, I mean, I kept going for recording. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, like, yeah. we never stopped recording. Right, yeah. right. It, it just shows and yeah, I got to I got a set of like twins, that. so a boy and a girl, so I had to just straight focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fatherhood. Yeah, this yeah. shit, yeah, this yeah. shit just set us straight. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. So, so with that, I mean, we had other ideas. Like rap was just one of the hustles, right? Mm-hmm. No disrespect to hip hop. We love hip hop and the whole nine, but it was the catapult for us to do just other dope shit that we always wanted to do in life. Right? You're still right. creative. Absolutely. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, if you stop learning, then you stop living, right? Mm-hmm. And you got to be excited. Ball. You got to be excited about the shit you want to do. So Trey wanted to do, he wanted to do a fucking security company. Uh, mm-hmm. We all always carry guns, illegal, all right. our life. <laughs> I'm out there, they'd be like, you good, get yeah. All like, yeah, our I life, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. um, so he he implemented that and did that and put that, that shit has been successful by the grace That's of God. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Brother. Yeah, we've been employing, we had like at least 30 something people we down to about, you know, maybe 19 yeah, yeah. now, you know what I'm saying? But we still employing people. Um, but you know, that's another, and that's, that's the, another That's thing. the security yeah. side. We still got other stuff, bail agents. Yeah, We yeah. do private investigations. We yeah, got to do yeah. personal protection, executive protection for you artists out there that's, that need yeah, that, that need protection. That, 
Wow. That real person. Not just a big man. Wow. Yeah, not just a big yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody that really go through these classes in school. We put all our guys through training. They train constantly to, you know, to keep to keep going. And then every year they gotta keep um, they gotta research. recertify. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. research yeah. for everything, gun training and also. Yeah. Brooklyn so security was- makes all the sense in the world to me. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Sounds why about not? I right. Mean, my to brothers me. gotta get I mean shit, why not get right. why not get legal? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And we like, take it over Virginia. We ain't playing, yeah, man. At, at, one, at one point we thought all of that shit. So you we gotta remember, playing, you know, when you're doing crime and all that shit, all right, you, you know the opposite, the opposite side of that. It's people paid to go after the crime, right? So, I mean, they the opposition. You know they exist. You ain't got to hate them or none of that shit, right? But you know they exist. But now you take crime out the equation, they ain't even a factor no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All of the shit that we used to worry about, hustling and all that shit, that shit is out the way. Now, you know, you got your haters and everybody got all that shit, you know, but mm-hmm. we ain't out doing wrong and we ain't looking for wrong. Right. But we prepared for whatever. I've mm-hmm. never heard any smooth the hustler, trigger the gambler hustlers, uh, haters ever. That's ever. love. Right? I've never, mm-hmm. I've never heard. Because they well armed. Stupid to say something about these niggas. <laughs> that's no, nah, that's I, I, you know what? I think it's a matter of and love think, and respect. And I think everywhere yeah. me and Smooth ever touch grounds at, no matter who we deal with or who we kick it with, we also it leads out of conversation of streets to an educational conversation. Yeah. Of yeah. something that we either teaching. Yeah, or yeah, passing some, passing some, t- some type, type of knowledge or some shit on like down that. to somebody else. So we never ever left probably anybody, a group of people, group of dudes, or right. anybody with any type of bad vibe or bad taste in right. the mouth anyway, because we don't have a motive. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? When you don't have a motive, you, you can you know, come in a, in a crowd and, and be good. Have right. your careers done what you wanted them to do? Mm. Well, for me, yes. Because I never had the dream of being the biggest mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the only one at the top. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've always wanted to be more for the success of my brother, just being what he is and mm-hmm. who he is. And because I got tagged along with the broken language and the fact that, you know, yeah, I'm his brother, right. you know, I'm holding the standards to what people hold me for. But I'm, I'm, I push more because I know where he can go at with it too, right. and I know where he'll be at. Yeah, yeah I was Me, on a I'm lot of yeah, I was on a lot of the um, remixes at mm. one point. You know what I mean? The SWV, yeah, the yeah, um, Blase, yeah. Blase, right. yeah. the Onyx. Right. Like, mm-hmm, how that come mm-hmm. about? You know what I mean? Was they reaching out to y'all? Like, how did that? Yeah, indeed. It was it, indeed. It, it was. Um, it depends on where we met, whoever we met at the time. Um, to just politic and, and say, hey, this is what we're doing now, and would y'all love right. being a part of it? It was a young lady too, who who came out right behind us, who I asked know. us for permission. T- he is. She she sung that record. Yeah. He is, and she was oh, doing broken language. Right. Oh, oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I forgot her name. It was on a movie too. It was in Brown Sugar. Yeah, yeah. I, oh yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's one of those. If you hadn't up, asked me, I probably yeah, would. It was said gangster. The name. It was gangster. We love it. But um, now, nah, very comfortable where I sit. To answer that question, yeah, mm-hmm. very comfortable where I sit. Um, I first off, I'd never thought of being Heather Headley. Heather Headley. Heather bingo. Bingo. Yeah. bingo. There you go. Shouts to Heather Headley. Yeah. I never, I never like coming up saying, "Oh, I'm gonna be a rapper." No, I just want to. Be on a, a do a video and kind of look cool and shit like that. I ain't. It wasn't none of that. But getting put up in the ranks because you know we was touring and seeing the album sitting in the classic section next to Run DMC and I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. And then getting spoken in, in conversations, um, which was it was very you know humbling. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like we don't run around. I never put myself way up here. Everybody is here, and you judge a man by his character until you got to. He let he let you know if he got to be here. 
you, you know, but ain't nobody up here. Ain't mm. nobody up here. We all here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we, yeah. we don't rock like that. When, but you, when I, you got the public enemies and the, the KRS-1s. Yeah, ones, KRS-1s. And, everybody. And the Melly Mel's. And, exactly. and they come in and they, you got shows with them and they're about to leave to get in the limo and they hear you on stage and they turn around and come back to your stage. Mm. I, I see yeah, yeah, Just to let you know, yo, I'm... I'm yeah. right back here. Or come, come in the just dressing coming. room. Yeah, yeah right? it's just the love. You know, right? the love to see mm -hmm. that. It was just something different. Like, wow. Like, you know, Chuck D, you know, saying to me, like, your voices is one of the voices that will make me turn back around in the stadium and come back to the stage. You know, just That's to dope. hear that from people I look up to. Absolutely. And to get a chance yeah. to work with them. Right. You, right. you know, mm -hmm. and to get a chance to work with them. Just, it was fucking mind blowing. I'm like, oh, right. wow. Yeah. I'm fucking fan. I'm fanning right now. I got Chuck D. I got Flavor Flav. You know, we in here. We doing the record. I'm like, oh, wow. This shit I like. Wow. I ain't even that think that far. What? He got game? For the He Got Game soundtrack. soundtrack. Mm -hmm. But yes. I ain't even I think that. that far. You you know. Um, and then, like I said, to know prior to what. I started hearing what I laid down and then behind that album and everything else that I started hearing. Um, if it reminded me of a piece of my work, it was definitely because you heard a piece of my work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's yeah. more gratifying than anything. Yeah. You know, when, you know, I can, like I said, I can pinpoint records. I mean, history don't lie, and right. you, you know what right. I mean. Um, so, yeah, not nah, gratifying, and I, you know, I'm where I'm exactly where I want to be. A lot you of know, people I don't, don't even know that y'all, y'all even had a cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, had we was working on a cartoon. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. my yeah. man, shout to my man Hoff. Yep, yep, shout to my Hoff. Shout to Hoff and Arts. Big Wheels. Yep, Big Wheels. Yep. That yep. was the name of the cartoon. Big Wheels called Big. We was trying to do everything, but everything was. For the love of kids, right? Because we got kids and we like, yo, we need to educate. Right. The more educating, you know, the less our kids got to right. deal with bullshit when they come up. So the right. teachers so, in the school was run DMC. And we yeah, had, yeah. We, it was, we tried to do a cool bunch of stuff. You know, but yeah. when you're doing yeah. it from with your own money and you got other people in play mm -hmm. and all that stuff, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's just, you know. It's, so coming all the way back around. From where we started to where we are now, yeah. you guys have sat out purposefully, stepped mm -hmm. stepped aside to be full time fathers, which makes all the sense in the world. Right. Still successful, still got good companies, making great money, still family. The family is never broken up. Mm -hmm. right. right. Now you're looking at hip hop, and you're seeing where you've influenced. Because when you're an original, it's easy to trace back the influence. Indeed. You know what I mean, you Indeed. can't mistake it for somebody else. But this definitely came from this. Right. Because right. there wasn't anything before this. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you're observing hip hop and you're seeing what's what's the direction? Are you does hip hop excite you? Is it boring now? Is it mm -hmm. how do well, you feel about it? It's it to, to me You're smiling as soon as I ask you. You try <laughs> not to laugh. Hip hop is bullshit. Uh, you try not listen, to laugh. Look, bullshit. You got plus plus <laughs> knowing 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 yeah. Knowing the grades you came from, knowing yeah, the yeah. era you came from, right, right. knowing who your contemporaries are, and who your peers are, like this right. is a this is a better view for you. Right, right. You gotta search for dope shit. Um, mm. you gotta search for dope shit. The dope, the dope motherfuckers is the people you probably ain't even hear yet. Um, that's true. I love. I, I I'm a fan of battle rap. I can't tell you five motherfuckers' names, but Matt Hoffa's one. Oh, Matt. Uh, say, oh, no, no, no. I, I couldn't you know, tell you five of them. But I, yeah, I know I Matt. I know one. Matt is one. I know Matt is one. But shouts to them. But I love that whole, I love that. That's super refreshing. That mm -hmm. shit is super refreshing, right? But, um, you know. Don't say it, man. To, to each his own. It's boring to a degree. But, you know, we just going to do our own type of music. We're going to push the envelope as far as what we want to do and implement what we want to do in mm -hmm. styles and, you, you know, and we don't really worry about too much of what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the whole key of being original. You can, you can pay attention, but, you know, the attention need to be here where you are. So there's, you, no, you, there's you know. no artists that you're listening to right now that's popping? Any artist that I'm listening to. J. Cole, Kendrick, Drake. 
How I'm you going to name not, niggas for him? I'm, I'm giving him I mean, an example. That, man. I mean, <laughs> those, an example. I'm those, trying to those, are the, those are the ones that's just kind of out there right now, which, you know, I those that Love you mentioned, song. they dope. They dope. I, yeah. I like those guys. Um, but then again, you, you know, it, I it depends on flavor. Should be. Because a lot of people ain't got, you ain't got to be super real, lyrical Trey. to just, you know, what you say, Trey? I listen to what my competition should be. What I think and, my competition is, right, is right, what right. I'm listening to that style of music or that you know type mm-hmm. of artist, mm-hmm. right, right. You know and, the lane um, you're in. Yeah, the lane I'm in. Who are they? Everybody else's lane don't matter to me. It right. doesn't. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. Li- I'm, I'm not listening. Honest, but who the nobody artist? Nobody is no. Right now, I like little. I like little dirt. I like you know. I like little baby. Mm. The baby. Oh, I, I like you him. Know, I like yeah, the, the yeah. artists like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, yeah. I said it on one of my other interviews, and dude was like, you know, ah oh, man, you know, them dudes don't care about you. I'm like, to each his own, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something that I see in them that you don't see. True. Mm-hmm. Right. Period. Right. Exactly. You know so you ain't been where I've been. You ain't did the things I've done. And if you have, then your eyes ain't my eyes. It's just simple. Period. You don't mm-hmm. fucking shit what I eat. Yeah. So yeah. At the end of the day, it's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Would right, you be right, would I'm you sad. be willing to embrace the OG role if these guys approached you and said, "Yo, I've done this, this, this in the business. I'd like to do this, this, and this. What do y'all think?" Like again, we're back at the beginning of the conversation. Yeah. Trig, yeah. Trig, and Smooth do that with us. I yeah, they right. they yeah. do that like when we, yeah. when I was little, they was doing that. Right, I right. Was doing that with niggas in the hood. That that's I, that I, trying to rap. I, tell, I always right. told you real mm-hmm. shit, right, guys? Right. I ain't never For years, tell, I never it was told like that. No, no, yeah. no sucker shit. Mm-hmm. We don't like, play I that shit. You stand on the truth. To record labels, Even like Pat we, used to be around them. Well, we Pat was, Poose on, okay. was around. Yeah. Oh, was yeah, on, yeah. I used to take Pat to every record label that exists and let him. You know, I used to rhyme for different people and artists and stuff like that. And just Pat was dope. A lot okay. of people ain't want to touch him. Mm-hmm. Shout okay. to my nigga Pat. I've been trying. I was talking yeah. to Pat the other day. We trying to get him up here. There you go. He's like, yo, just, I just, I yeah. Pat just called me the other day. Like, not even probably like probably six days ago, or something like that. He just mm-hmm. told me him and Smooth was chopping it up. Yeah. For something doing going for. He know y'all so. here. I talked to him the other day. He know y'all got something going on. Shouts to Pop from the barbershop too. It's my nigga Pop from the barbershop. Do you think you can do more good? For the culture in an executive role. Indeed. Yeah. And see, this is this is kind of where this is kind of where it becomes a, a, a 50-50, right? Because no one can blame you right. Right. for stepping away to be full-time fathers. Right? Oh yeah, nah. No one can no I one, no I one can hit. ever shit on that at mm. all. Ever. Mm. And wouldn't right. attempt to, especially not in this room. Especially mm. not us. We That's would never, fact. we would never. I don't even have kids, and I, I yeah, understand yeah. where that comes from. You hear me mm-hmm. talk about my father. You know, right. you know, I give it up. But at the same time, mm-hmm. there's a culture, absolutely, that certain aspects of it you've helped birth mm-hmm. because you're an original. You've son. You have a lot of sons out here, mm-hmm. and your absence leads right. these children to where they are. Absolutely, now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. absolutely. Do you ever think about maybe? Finding a way to come back in from an executive level where you can actually guide careers and really put some music out that influences the culture. Yeah. And because you have a, the ears of an original, maybe you can spot other originals mm-hmm. and add some mm-hmm. things to where it's not boring when you listen to it. And it right. is exciting when you check for it. Right? Indeed, right. indeed. I mean, well, I would love to we, do something like that. We, we we're doing that now. We open a 20 up a studio. square foot studio. In Virginia, you yeah. know, just fire, just for dope. that, yeah, just to, that to, purpose, to artists, the nurture, to, yeah, or everything, or the yeah. the whole craft, Band, whether it's exactly. it was a big ass building, production, I was like, Damn, yeah. camera lost work, in that shit, uh, uh, you, you know, podcast, whatever, whatever, you, whatever, you do, whatever yeah. you're trying to do, marketing, whatever you're trying to do, we got a, a 2,400 square foot spot, Still. and we are slowly nurturing. Those that want to come in and be nurtured. Right. Computers there, it's cameras there, it's, and you know, it's yeah. like a, a young YMCA. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The equipment brand and shit new is boards, there. Brand new What's up? There. So yeah, but you know, we get we we slowly getting our shit in order. Like we we spread thin. Like I got shit that I like to do, he got stuff he like to do. Collectively, we do stuff together. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a, a trucking company 
we regrouping right now. So one in a few days, we're going to go back down, sell our tractor trailer, uh, and get a few box trucks and regroup. So mm-hmm. we're doing, we we do, we doing a lot of stuff. It's mm-hmm. just, yeah. you know, we ain't big on Show being people. out there, yeah, showboating and all that right. shit. Yeah, we're yeah, all that candy shit. candy shops, like icy stores. Yeah, like yeah, that. uh-huh. We've been doing all of that stuff, but we just yeah. slowing down right now. Yeah. Just so we can just focus. We just got the Smith Brothers project. We yeah, so right now we're working on the album. Yeah. Nice. And it's you dope. guys will be hearing that soon. That's some we're gonna be seeing DR soon. Um, mm-hmm. cause I think it's important for him and I and the relationship and the marriage to do something and put something out again. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not worried about if it's gonna be the biggest shit, but it's for the it's culture. Going, it's for the culture, That's absolutely. Right. And and I mean, knowing what we do, motherfuckers going to turn around and look. That's right. As they Guarantee. And I yeah. got my big brothers on the big Brooklyn joint. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I got yeah, my yeah. niggas <laughs> trigger on that. Oh, That's yeah, yeah. We on, the joint. we on the joint with Gat. Shouts to Thurston Howe. Um, we yeah. just did a uh, the Brownsville Legends joint. Mm-hmm. Nice. So shouts to Thurston. Yeah. Yo, um, promote your merch. Let them know where they can I, get it from, Smooth. Yeah, we, we actually, we're going to have a gang of merch. You can go to smgmusicgroup.com and, and um, pick you up a hoodie, man. Yeah, get that I, hoodie. Know, we're going to have We all got one. Enough, Simplicity you know, right is key. You, you, you'll be able to get all the exclusive new shit. Like, everything is going to be from the site. So when we're doing exclusive drops or mm-hmm. records or singles, everything will be shot will come from that site. Mm-hmm. So you, you can know, go right to the um, site and get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what's Pretty up. Much. Fellas, no, no, no my crew can't go problem. for that. My crew can't go for <laughs> my that. My crew can't hey. go for that. Y'all gotta speak on that. All right. Oh, that was a um that was a single off Def Jam. That was a single Nutty Professor soundtrack. Um yeah. That was a single on the Nutty Professor Professor soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um we basically was the last was to get a song on that soundtrack. Word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to be yeah. honest with they you. They needed something. They needed They needed something more, you know, hip hop slash crossover ish. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what they needed. I mean, that's something specifically they asked for. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We just sat in the studio and said, "All right, let's do what we do best." Let's, you yeah. know. My trig, it wasn't my nigga Trig was like, "I sit back in my bed, watch my <laughs> tag, make sure yeah. my days is excellent before yeah. my eyes get red." Yeah. yeah. That was my yeah. shit right like there, Trig. <laughs> Niggas yeah. was sleeping See, on my brother, son. Yeah, y'all, y'all go y'all go look at, y'all go look for it. Go to Spotify, go up there. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Like, home, don't just don't just stop there. Like go down the list and see why these dudes are in the chair now. You need to go Legendary. We're helping Helping you. Yeah. We're helping you. And I want my yeah. plaque, Def Jam. Y'all ain't giving me my plaque. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Shouts to mm. uh, rest in peace to Big L too. You know, he yeah. was a homie. Uh, One time. Yeah, he was a homie of mine. Yep. I used to go uptown, see him. And when we did the broken language yeah, video he shoot, down. he jumped on a train and came down. Yeah. I had two of my homeboys holding him down, but that's how solid he was. One yeah. of the so shouts to Big L. Word up. Yeah, one, one of the, the dope. Yeah, 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 I had Shaheen there too. You know what yeah, I mean? That was somebody yeah. that was running with y'all a lot. Exactly. That was our little dude. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know. So I, I run with Brooklyn yep. all the time. He yep. come out of house. He come hang out with me, hang out with Smooth. You know, that was our little Everybody dude. came through. Everybody. Buster, everybody. Everybody. Right. everybody who was somebody we was intermingling with. And I mean, it was it was all love. Again, you know, yeah. you seeing people that you grew up watching on TV come give you your your just do your respect, show love. We had a album release party. Everybody who was somebody was there, you know, bringing gifts and words of wisdom. So it was dope. And yeah, to, was dope. to have it all jump off from us saying, "Yo, let's put out our own shit. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. put out our own shit," and they going to just catch on. When, they catch it, when it hit, <laughs> if they don't catch, fuck it. Right. You know what I'm saying? If they catch, let it catch. Mm-hmm. And, you, you know, it, it worked. And you got to remember, New, uh, America is just one region, man. Right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's right. millions of places yeah. to sell your music. That's a fact. And, you know, I, you know and, and we, I, I made sure I wanted to shout DR period out in a lot of my songs. Because right. I know when he was getting mistaken, his joints... They was mistaking them shit saying Prim, uh, Primo, Primo was doing, doing it. Mm. They thought Primo did a lot of the album and shit. So I was like, when I do my album, I'm going to make sure my man get his just due. You know, 
I'm a gym. So you, you he had a out when he was here. You had yeah, that's the yeah, homie. That, yeah, that's that's yeah. my homie. We're we gonna go see him in, in about three days or some shit. We we've been yeah. talking, you know, everybody is in their own right doing their own thing. We was all young, we was all new into the game. The game was new, you know, the game right. was new. Mm-hmm. Um and everybody was just trying to find a place, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody was just trying to find well, back a place. then. Um, like the artists were shouting out the the producers on the track. Mm-hmm. Now the producers is putting their little yeah, they, they got to put their tags on yeah, the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they that's like, how we knew who the producers the was back then. Right, yeah. right, niggas right. just blaze. Yeah, 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 yeah. Period. Right, right. You know what right, I mean? Niggas right. was saying that on the tracks. Right, now right. the producers got their tags on the beat. So Must now on the beat, hope. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't who, blame them though. I don't blame them. Because a lot of artists type, wasn't yeah, shouting yeah, yeah. them niggas it's out. They like, yo, the, the producers. They get tight. Like, yo, yeah. that niggas ain't shout me out. I made that beat, nigga. Yo, listen, a ton of producers got fucked. In, yeah. Era, yeah. in the era where people stopped reading the, the line of notes, the credits. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. you gotta, you That's when it was authentic, though. When you go buy an album, you open it, you like, oh, oh. They don't have that no more. put that body over gone. Everybody makes adjustments. Fellas, listen. I, I look at your contemporaries, I look at the people you guys started with, and I look at where they took it as far as the heights of their careers. Mm-hmm. And I look at what it cost them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Jay and Dame, Brotherhood, mm-hmm. cost them. Mm-hmm. You know, Big L, cost him his life. Mm-hmm. DMX, the addictions as he got further and further up in fame and all that pressure, mm-hmm. cost him. If the price of being universally loved right having a universally recognized single, being an original, and never seeing that level of global acclaim is being able to maintain a brotherhood Mm -hmm. and still go back around the way and employ all these people, I consider that a legendary life. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate that. That's right. My man. Move, move on. Trigger the game, y'all. Brooklyn. Big Brooklyn. We out. It's all around. Look around you, man. You can find inspiration. You can find discouragement. It all depends on you. Perception is everything. Some people just hear another song. Some people hear the greatest. A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays I bump side A. Traffic on bumper to bumper, stuck on the highway. 